that was horrible. Knock, knock. Knock, 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 knock. Knock. Wow. My, I love. Derek, I told you this was a good yeah. idea to get this comical door that tells you knock instead of actual knock sounds. Um, it's actually the doorbell. <laughs> well, hello. Hello, it's me. I've got a letter of urgent importance for uh, Isaac Carey. That's, um. That's close enough. Yeah, I'll take that note. Thank you. Thank Are you, you Isaac Carey? I'm Isaac Carey, yes. Okay, here, that's me. here you go. Thank you. Um, did you have one for a, for a, for a dairy he's gone. wonkin? No dairy wonkins? No, he's gone. Oh, I'm sorry, he's, Derek. Next he's time. Running o- oh, he's ringing on somebody else. He just got oh. kicked in the face. Oh, gosh. What's that letter? What's uh, Oh, what's in this letter? This is an urgent request for your assistance. It is me, speaking your aunt. The, the letter is speaking to me. I need you to come to the house immediately. Okay, okay. Come to my house, please. Okay. You just, you... I'm in love with you. Oh, okay, I'm shutting the... <laughs> did that say your aunt was in love with you? Nope, not me, not my aunt. Not hey, why did episode. that letter rebuild itself and it is now in your <laughs> whoa, hand Whoa, 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 it's in my hand again. This is an urgent request. I need you to come Stop to my it. house immediately. <laughs> it's rebuilding again. Uh, this oh, is an urgent... Oh, oh, oh. Tell me more about you being in love with your aunt. I have a question though. Is it like a comically comically large aunt? Like with multiple legs, yes. or is it like your mother or your father's? No, brother? see, that's the thing. It's like it's Sister. like an ant, like the insect. There's a lot, my aunt is just giant, just um, human humanoid ant woman. That explains. You've heard of Ant Man, <laughs> which is a family woman. friendly movie. Much like this episode is going to be very family friendly. I think we've been very good. so we've far. We've been very good so far. We're, you talked a little bit about my aunt being in love with me. That's completely family friendly. Yeah, <laughs> actually, <laughs> arguably the most family friendly you could be. Well, welcome back, everyone. Here is our family. Family friendly episode of the show. Share this one with your kids. I'm, Share this one with your mom. We are Share this not, one with your dad. We are not going to get the explicit tag on this one. This is it's our true. family. Well, we're taking you guys to Sesame Street. To Here the we point. are. My name is Alpha Bet, and I'm the one who teaches you numbers. I'm Beta Bet. <laughs> And what do you teach us here on this show? This is like some equations. And we've got a fun little cat. His yep, name is yeah. Tickles. Yep, and he's yep. very safe to play with kids. He won't hurt them at all. Scratchy, scratchy. Scratchy, scratchy. I'm Tickles. How do we talk about a rated R? I, I, I'm Derek. <laughs> and I'm Isaac. Welcome back to our real show. We'll spell it out in alpha blo- like alphabet block letters here. This is TWH, T also is known as the- That was horrible. No, Derek, what was yours? <laughs> T-W-H, what does that stand for? That T is for the W's for what? What? H is, H is for, for heckin'. Heckin'. <laughs> Welcome to What the Heckin'. The what heckin', actually. The, the what heckin', yeah. <laughs> now, where that was horrible. That's us. We're your boys. I'm Isaac. That's Derek. We're here to discuss the latest and greatest and all that is good and bad in horror worlds. And we can't, for the life of us, nail an intro. No, never will we. We I, do our best. At reviewing the... The frick. The frick. Oh, oh, oh man. Remember. Do we watch... We watch comedies, right? We, we watch, watch we watch comedies. We watch. I find myself rom-coms. laughing a lot when we watch movies. Oh, absolutely. That's kind of the, that's, it, that's what makes it, them for us. Is it horror? Horror, yeah, horror bowl. You know, get it? You see, oh. what we did is we took the word horrible and we shoved horror right Bloop. inside of it. Bloop! There it is. Wee, 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 and we, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's the whole part of having a family friendly episode. Is it like comic sound effects? Wee, wee, boy, wee, 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 wee. <laughs> You're about that. Uh, wait, what's not, not not Karl Marx? Who's the guy who did uh, the, the the comedy? <laughs> the com- Who was the comedy man? No, 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 the guy. The guy. He's like a. He's like a. You talking about the guy that makes like the sound effects? N- maybe. There's a guy who I just recently watched Spaceballs. Actually, oh, yeah. and there's a guy that they hired specifically because he does like sound yeah. effects. Yeah, he was and also in a, in a in a in a police academy. Yeah, that guy. And apparently, like having him do the sound effects saved them like thousands of dollars. Incredible. That's insane to me. <laughs> was his name full? Foley? His name is Foley, yeah. Foley, uh, Foley. Work. Foley, Foley work. Work it. Foley, work it. So why did you get a letter? I, I need to go back because you got I a letter from your I don't want to talk about my large aunt. Aunt. Does she live in a hill? This is, this is my she aunt. Does she live in Beverly Hills? This is Aunt Aunt. Can we? Oh, my goodness. She lives in Beverly Hills. Million absolutely. dollar idea. How did you know? <laughs> Million dollar idea. <laughs> But see, then you're gonna have a bunch Beverly of people. Hills. You're gonna make that movie. Then you're gonna be at your panel at Comic Con, and everyone's gonna be like, "Oh, so settle a score here. Is it actually Aunt Aunt or Aunt Aunt no, or no, no. Aunt 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 Aunt? Actually, it's, uh, it's Aunt Aunt is what we were Wait, going we for. We did decide that it's every... kind of in the spelling of it. Yeah, every filmmaker does speak in a British accent. So, yeah, oh, that's yes, right. What, what you need to understand is it see, was it was my aunt's aunt. 
So she, my aunt owned an aunt, and that aunt became an aunt. You see, it's becoming harder life. to understand you through your accent there. So is it aunt or aunt? aunt? aunt. It was my aunt's aunt. Uh, I'm not getting it. This isn't making any sense so, to me. So my mother's brother's sister okay. is ownership of an aunt. And that aunt is my aunt's aunt. That's wonderful. When does Robert Downey Jr. show up in this one? Because I've got some money riding on that one. He's he's playing Dr. Dub. <laughs> Dr. Dr. Dwab. This is a very topical episode. We're hot off the <laughs> hot off the news about Robert Downey Jr. Hey, joining back into movies. So it's been a pretty eventful couple weeks. What do you what have you been up to, Isaac? What are you what's your life like? What you doing? What is my life like these days? I have a lot more free time now that I'm not in a show. Yeah, I you, just you watch do. I watch more movies now, which is nice. I think that's the best use of my time is just to watch movies. Yeah, but like we, we don't realize saw. how much it happens. I I can't tell you how many times within the past couple weeks there have been people like oh can you do this thing this day i'm like no i'm watching a movie that day be it either for this podcast or just for pleasure yeah and you know both are true i watch yeah. movies for this podcast for pleasure it's true. but we watch a lot of movies we do watch a lot of movies and i'm proud of that i love that movies are a pastime of mine but we haven't had a chance to stand up on our high horse <laughs> hello it's me <laughs> would you like me to build you a very family friendly box build me a family you i, I you i, I got i love Boxes. I've got the I've got the taser in my hand right here, Ooh. and I need you like one one horny word out of your mouth. You can't even say that word. Oh, shoot. should I bleep that word? <laughs> no, you can't say. Hey, hey, what? Don't what? say it. Oh, what you build, say? A, build a very family friendly, very safe box. A big, big, big. Okay. A big, big, big. Okay. Cookie, 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 cookie. Clonk. <laughs> like the monster, the cookie monster. I don't know. Cookie, cookie, cookie. I remember back in the day. When I was a widow power me, uh -huh. and my mommy and my daddy loved me so much, and I was just a nice, wholesome horse, yeah. and it was glorious, and I would like to go back to those days. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good. But honestly, okay. uh -huh. I'm a widow wired. Uh -huh. <laughs> tired. Okay, tired. Not but wired, wired. But I say everything. With you're wired and you're tired. You're wired. wired. This voice is so easy to do now. Back <laughs> in the day, Derek would really struggle. Anyway, here's his box. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Derek, my, get up on this box. What are we talking about? Uh, oddity, man. <laughs> we saw Oddity. Now, listen. listen. I, we're going to create some tension here, listen. I know, amongst the horror fans listen. that are listening to this. The world is all on the long legs hype train. I get it. We saw it. I was, too. It was enjoyable. You know, it was a good am. time. I still... We are not here to bash on, on long legs at no, all. No, no, no. But in my opinion pretty quickly over like dethroned by this movie oddity yeah. that also came out what a, like two weeks a week after was, the fact yeah they were like a week apart yeah we saw them like two separate fridays right something yeah. like that but yeah oddity you guys like easily one of the best horror movies i've seen in recent years just Ed. incredible i've seen it so twice good. now even better on a second viewing yeah and the thing about it is it's like it's what what I think is something like here. Let me. Can I borrow your box real quick? Can we just? I'll stand up next to you. I'll move to another one. That's okay. That's okay. Not you've, enough had, room. you've had your time. You've had your time. You got okay. out of here safely. We don't. Need I promise. I signed my contract that I would be very family friendly. Okay. <laughs> I'll get on my my high horse and my hope my soapbox here because there's something about Long Legs was still a good movie. I still enjoyed it. Some incredible performances in it. Obviously, every every performance in the movie was incredible. But there is something to be said about the hype that surrounds a movie that can really make yeah. it so it will never live up to anything, right? Because in your brain, you make out this whole thing of what it's supposed to look like, and it can't ever live up to that when it comes to comes to fruition, right? Sure. So while it was great, I did feel like I walked out of, that, out of that theater being like, this movie was crazy hyped up, and like I just saw a regular movie, you know? And that's fine. Yeah. We should be able to meet movies more where they are at. However, with Oddity... This movie, the trailer was dropped with the release of In a Violent Nature. Yep. And that was the first time either of us had seen it. Me and Derek were in the theater together. We looked at each other like, what the what heck that? is this? I need to see that movie. What in the heck? Heck. What in the heck? What in the heck is going on here? Because we had never even heard anything yeah. about this movie at all. Then I went home that night and looked it up. Nothing. Absolutely no, no word about this movie existing at all. I was like, this movie was made up. We had a fever dream and something terrible happened. Yeah. Then a week later, they released uh, the trailer for it. But there's been such little talk about this movie. Oh, yeah. And then it just kind of dropped a week after Long Legs, like the most one of the most anticipated horror releases of this year. And yeah. then, it, then it just was incredible. And then it was gone. <laughs> And then it like, was no gone. one's talking about it anymore. No, exactly. And I like, I really want to like stay up on this high horse and tell you. I need to if tell you everyone. Can go see this movie and you're a fan of horror, go. Yes. Like, I was so scared during this movie. If you can see it in theater, I don't know if it's in theaters anymore. It had a very limited release because like, now it's going to be streaming on Shudder pretty soon oh, or if it's not that's already. That's good, though, because it's going to get publicity that yes, way. Exactly. And please watch it and the lights off. 
preferably in an abandoned can- cabin in the middle of in nowhere. In the middle of nowhere, <laughs> yeah, you know, where your, your sister died recently in there and is haunted by her ghost, you know. I've said, I've said too much. That's actually, like... I've said too much. Arguably too much, but it's all I knew about the movie. It's going in, in the so. trailer. It's somewhere within there. But honestly, very, very good time sale. We've seen some pretty good horror recently. I also just recently watched a movie called... Okay, it's weird. It's got two different titles. It's either Brain Dead or Dead Alive. It's like the bloodiest, gutsiest zombie movie I have ever seen. It is absolute insanity. The practical effects go nuts. Every time you think they've topped themselves and like, you know, what could be the craziest thing that happens, it keeps going till the very end of the movie. I thought we yeah. really seen it all. Like there's a sequence I can mention because it's in the trailer. There's a sequence where a dude takes a lawnmower, turns it on and just tilts it upwards and just shreds through an entire mob of zombies. That's like, crazy. It is bonkers. It is wild. It is bat crap insane. Yeah. I also watched a pretty insane movie what did you watch that was insane i watched unfrosted <laughs> oh boy <laughs> you know guys the the jerry seinfeld movie hey i made a movie about pop tarts i made a pop tart movie That's, so what's with pop tarts it, listen don't i don't there's nothing to say about the movie except, they pop up out of the toaster except there's a scare me sometimes i'm afraid of pop tarts jerry, Sein- jerry seinfeld yeah <laughs> help me please there's so <laughs> many pop tarts <laughs> i walk outside and my wife's a pop tart now do you God. know do you know how that movie uh, established canon for the name Pop Tart. No, oh, please tell me. They they had like a bunch of words that were describing the Pop Tart. Yes, and then they so put, it, it didn't have a name at this point. No, and they took the acronym of all the letters and backwards it was like Tat Pop or Tart Tart Pop Pop or something like that. Pop-tart. It was, but it was like backwards. Trat, it was tra- Trat Pop. Trap Pop. That's trat what pop. it was. It was Trap Pop. <laughs> and then someone got like coffee on a piece of paper that had it written on it. Oh, no, no, no. The the TV reporter uh-huh. had Silly Putty and he pushed it against it and, and then he then it, it smudged it. it and it flipped it upside down and said Pop Tart. And the kids went wild. What on I don't earth? Know. But let me tell is you, that real? Is that no, actually that can't I, be how it happened? There's no way that that's how it happened. The movie was far fetched and ridiculous. Oh the wow! The only reason to watch that movie and maybe just like find it online <laughs> is there is a there is a uh, what do you call it? A funeral? Yes. That they get the Como full say funeral. They get the full cereal bowl treatment. <laughs> So, so it's tell like, me more about the cereal bowl treatment. You put air quotes around that. What does that mean? So they like sit down and like everybody's sad and they're literally burying someone. And then like all of these cereal mascots come up and they dump a bunch of cornflakes into the grave, into the open grave. Now, is it like, are they like CGI animated? No, 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 or are they no, like no, in no, no, mascot no. costumes? Mascot costumes. Okay, okay, for sure, for it's sure. It's still weird either way. They're great. And, uh, oh crap, we just got demonetized. Ah. Anyway, they, they go up and they pour a bunch of like comically large cornflakes into this uh the the hole the in the ground the grave the grave <laughs> hole, the hole all the caskets being lowered that's in. the dead hole then they dump in a bunch of milk and then they like <laughs> take the spoon and they're like shuffling it around and people are just like crying but like a comically large spoon yeah, con- <laughs> Yeah, just a huge spoon. Big. And then Snap, Crackle, and Pop are there. And the they, Rice Krispie Kids? Yeah. Of the Rice Krispie Gang? Yeah. <laughs> They're there. And they they fold up the little, like, back in the day, you'd get those little, like, prize coupons. Yes, yes. And they fold up a little prize coupon and, and hand it, it to the Oh, <laughs> the my widower. gosh. <laughs> That's insane. Dude, it is wild. The movie itself was just mid. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, whole, that whole part. Uh, I also watched Pig. Pig, Which I need to yes. talk about real quick. Freaking Nicholas Cage, high off the Nicholas Cage train. No one told me that movie was a movie about a chef. I am. A, I didn't I know that either chef. until you told me that. I don't know if that's a spoiler. I didn't. Should I? Shouldn't I? Don't know. Mm, well, spoiler. Anyway, the whole movie was just a big chef's table episode, yeah. well, and like, it was incredible. Nicholas Cage got off like because he's on like the the press tour for Long Legs at this yeah. point, right? And people he people ask him because he's been in so so many movies at this point. Only like five. they were like of your filmography, you know, what is like your most proudest work? What is it you want people to go see if they're like you know feeling like oh Nicholas Cage is so yeah. cool after seeing Long Legs? He said Pig. He said absolutely go see Pig. Well, there there's a moment towards the end of the movie where he is told some information and all of the sound cuts out and you see him just scream and fall to the ground never in my life has nicholas cage affected me in that kind of a way in like an emotional like oh you didn't really feel that way when he was in mandy and he was screaming and like his little whitey (laughs) tighties oh you ripped my shirt (laughs) oh that's That's so bad that's a pretty good nick cage my wife and my shirt are missing (laughs) in this movie it was oh you stole my pig 
Give me back my pig. Is this like some kind of John Wick situation where he's missing his pig? <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> the first scene of the movie is pig gets kidnapped. And okay. then he's like, because he's, an, he's an old chef who lives in the woods, like collecting truffles with his pig, right? That's, That's living the American all you dream. Need to know. <laughs> anyway, I actually highly recommend that movie. It had some of the most beautiful cinematography. It's split up into chapters, which is your big thing. Oh, I love when a movie has chapters. There's something yeah. about when a movie starts on the, like, you know, chapter one or like when it just has a title before it starts. I love that yeah. stuff. It's very, yeah. very good things. I feel like, what was it? Was Furiosa did that yeah, recently? Furiosa yeah, we watched that. Oh, yeah, Furiosa Another great so movie. I think we talked about that at some point. Probably. But anyway, that's, that's our recap. But that's not what we watched this week. Oh, my eye. What's that? What's in your eye? Oh, Derek, Derek, what, what, is, what is that? It's like it's a cat. You pulled out of your eye. See, there was an eye in my cat because we watched Eye of the Cat. We watched Eye of the Cat. Because this is Not to be confused with Eye of the Tiger, which is a whole other thing. And you've been singing for the last hour. This this movie Stuck in my we watched because it's our 69th episode, and so I picked a movie from 1969. Um, not to be confused with... The innuendo. The innuendo, is, of course. We will not we, mention. We would, we would not mention that. Not on this podcast. Family friendly. Family uh, friendly. We're actually we, going to 96. We're just going to like back to back. Whop, whop. This, uh, <laughs> I was two. <laughs> just so you know. The year 96. <laughs> 96. I was two. I was negative three. Don't say that. Oh, no. This is Garfield. He's going to eat your soul. Um, but what was I going to say about it? <laughs> I can't. I think we have a lot of things to probably say about. I mean, the movie. about the movie, yeah. We had picked a movie from from 1969 because, of oh, course, yeah. it's our 69th episode, and we thought it'd be a funny thing to just completely go the opposite direction we've been yeah. in most episodes and just say we're as clean as we possibly can be for this episode. Because so, yeah. everybody wants it to be the big innuendo episode. You know, everyone's yep. like, ah, yeah, oh, they're going to be so rowdy and really raunchy understand. and sexed up in this one. Not this time, folks. Nope. And nope, I'm, we are very safe and family friendly on this podcast. And if here. we slip up. We're bleeping it. We're here from the church to tell you, and then we're never, we're never going to swear what in this are you episode. From? I'm from the church of the guy, the, the eye of the tiger. You know where I'm the church from? I'm well, the church of hard knocks. The church of hard no, please. And I'm don't knock, knock hard on this. I'm a very gentle person. Knock three times. Knock. What is okay? Okay. Knock, knock, knock. There Good it job. is. I'm proud of you. I, I did it. You, you ascended. I follow. I follow instructions very well. <laughs> hey, I'm obedient, drinking, and I serve the Lord. Um, I don't know. Probably nothing a, alcoholic because there's uh, a clear. There's a clear cup in my hand, and I'm scared. There are bubbles coming up out of it, so I know it's not just Hello, water. It is me, Bilbo. Bilbo, no. should... I heard you're having a family-friendly uh-huh. episode. Uh-huh. Should I take a sip? I'm, I'm scared Take now. a little sippy you're sip. giving me some kind of tonic here. Okay, here we go. Mm, maybe. Mm-hmm. So what's uh, what do we have here, Bilbo? Do you not like it? Well, no, it's great. First what? sip is disgusting, but the next five are delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I don't know what's after five though. I've only had, I've only had six. I, I, I capped out at six. <laughs> but uh, are you taking four more sips? Beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll tell you when I get to my fifth, and it's like that's the peak. Oh, it. it is. It doesn't okay. get any better than no, that. No. So when I decided it was a family-friendly episode because I make all the decisions as Bilbo Baggins. Yeah, yeah. Um, I thought it'd be really funny if you watched a movie about a kitty. Okay. And then you we did watch a movie about that. a kitty. Yeah, we did. <laughs> and it wasn't what, Garfield. What do kitty have? Kitty have paws. What do I'm the claws? I mean paws. <laughs> Frick. I almost kitty, swore. Kitty. Ooh, so close. No, we're family friendly and safe on this podcast. Um, kitty, kitty, kitty paws have claws. Oh, so what's in your drink? Kitty paw have claw. Is there? Is it? Um, is it a specific color? It's is it just, white? Maybe. Ooh, it might just be a white claw. Is it a white claw? <laughs> I'm very funny, and it's not because I'm lazy at all. I totally could have made a full drink. It was just then, very funny to make a white claw because then, you're drinking a cat. And then, yeah, if we, you're if, drinking if people, a cat, if people look, oh, gross! You no, are drinking a cat. Don't tell me that. Don't tell me I'm drinking a cat's Soupy white twist. claws. Oh gosh! But see, then if we use this for any kind of marketing or anything, it's still family friendly because they can say it's a cup of water. This is a cup of water. This is a nice little cup of. On water. one hand, you've got a cup of water. In the other hand, Daddy's gonna be sleeping. <laughs> Daddy's gonna be sleeping. <laughs> I don't know. On the other hand, Daddy's gonna be sleeping, <laughs> like the father, like, like, a, a, like father, a father, not father like a dad. sex thing. It's like, like just just the father, like father dad, like father dad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, everybody. Does. Oh, father dad, thank you for seeing with, with <laughs> sitting with me today, and I'm here to discuss Eye of the Cat. Not to be confused with my favorite song, Eye of the Tiger. What? It's the Eye of the Tiger. See, I love to sing, and I think I'm pretty good at it. What do you What do you think, Daddy, Father Daddy? Oh, <laughs> I've been blessed. Have <laughs> me from the Church of Hard Knocks. Gosh. This character scares me if we're trying to go, like, 
safe on this one. No I need explicit. to beat you up. <laughs> what? No, please. My gentle demeanor. <laughs> it's nothing compared to my heart demeanor. I'm going to beat you up. Oh, care- be careful there. <laughs> nothing. Don't talk about your heart demeanor on this episode. <laughs> okay, now phone in. Let us know if that's too far. We need to do what they do in, like, improv, where, like, if you go too far. Because <laughs> Derek's a part of an improv group. If we didn't know, we, you know this at what? this point, if you know this thing. And, Derek, what do they say if you go too far in the family-friendly improv? Okay, so, I, well, you got to explain it a little bit further. Yeah. yeah, okay, okay. It's a group of improvers that we pretend we're superheroes. <laughs> You made something that already wasn't cool <laughs> sound even worse. No, no. We're improving like we're superheroes. <laughs> no, that's not is what, that I mean. what it is. I, I, I never thought about that. It's a group of superheroes versus villains. It's it's really cute, very family friendly. If you do something bad or inappropriate, you get decapitated. Yeah, you get your cape taken and away. Ceremoniously, you know, you get your cape removed from you. You are executed out back by the Joker. <laughs> You want to know see how, how I got this gun? <laughs> you want to know how I got this gun? It was in every sketch I did. <laughs> I mean, uh, is it too cringy to do our best Joker impressions? <laughs> yes. Okay. Absolutely. I think we already did it. <laughs> that wasn't my best. I could do better. Oh, so, so you can do better. No, Derek, you want to get up on your high horse and give me your best Joker? Oh, don't let him. I'm not going to build a box for that one. No way. <laughs> All right. Even a high let's, horse is vetoed. That let's one. get out of here. Let's Goodness. let's talk about let's, I Have the Cat. Let's run away. So yes, we watched I Have the Cat. Derek picked this one. It's from 1969. I I just I was so excited because because is because, there someone attached to this one, Derek? Yeah. So I was looking through different movies. I was checking ratings and stuff from 1969. Obviously, a lot of bad movies came out in 1969. By the way, we and had a lot, lot of pickings. classic ones. Um, sorry, my chest. Always. <laughs> Sorry, my chest. Are you dying? Are you okay? It was a little L bubble. Okay. Oh, okay. So, it wasn't a burp, though. That's gross. Yeah, because that's gross and not family friendly. Anyway, so this movie was written by none other than Joseph Stefano. Well, what has uh, Joseph Stefano done? So he wrote a couple episodes of the Star Trek Next Generation. Okay. Yeah, he yeah, also big, wrote the Outer Limits TV show. Okay. Yeah, we're getting we're getting somewhere. It's almost it's almost something I would watch. And uh, he also wrote. Uh, dang it! Oh, I thought I was going to have another joke. No, he so he was the writer of Psycho. He adapted the book Psycho to be the writer. That was the sound of me spitting out all of my that white claw. <laughs> that was my spit take. Don't spit out the white claw is so expensive. It's like Ritz. <laughs> it's like Ritz crackers. Yeah, Ritz crackers. <laughs> That's how you, when I win the lottery, I won't tell anyone, but there will be signs, and those signs will be eating Ritz crackers and drinking White Claw. Okay, I don't know, I don't know if anyone out there is drunk White Claw. I know our audience are primarily not drinkers, so, which is funny, because we have a whole segment about Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I actually It's a great you. decision. What are you going to say about White Claws? I don't know claws. what your life is. White Claws are... Just like LaCroix, yes. but for alcohol. It's one of those things where like, they shout out the name of the fruit outside of the room, and you kind of get the hint of that. Yeah, if I didn't know what flavor this was, I'd probably, maybe like kiwi. It's hint of hint of lime. Strawberry. There's no lime in that. Oh, no. I think it's like strawberry. I think it's supposed to be it's strawberry. Fruity. It's fruity of a sort. That is all I know. Up. That's all I know about it. Anyway, so Psycho. Writer of Psycho. Writer of Psycho, Joseph Stefano. Derek, have you ever seen that movie? Psycho? It's only my favorite horror movie of all yeah, time. Yeah, it is. He we've loved talked about that, that before, movie. though. I, it's just glorious. Ooh, we should do an episode where we just, like, we've done a top ten of all of the yeah, year. Yeah. We should do one of all time. Boy, that is the hardest. It's hard. And okay, you were with me on this. It is hard enough to yeah, make man. top 10 of a year. Do what, it. Garfield? Garfield? Do Garfield, don't tell me to do me, it. Garfield. Gar- you got to use your real voice. It. Come on. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll use my real voice, but you, but like you know what I mean. Like coming up with top ten for just last year was yeah, was already rough. was impossible. Finding all time, I want to do it. I'm People not would saying, love it. I'm not saying no. I'm just saying we're, we we can work we're on it through the year. No, we're doing it right now. We're, okay, right now, right now, right now. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, <laughs> um, ten things I hate about you: The Princess Diaries, uh, Garfield, um, Freaky movie, Friday, um, that Disney Freaky movie Friday Zombie. Um, do you hear me? Not swear. You did. Look at you. Womp (laughs) womp. All right. So, yeah, it was also directed by David Lowell Rich. I wonder who's going to slip up first. Which of us is going to swear? I don't know. I think it's going to be you. I feel like it's going to be you. I think it's going to be you. All right. All right. Tough guy. Take a bet. You son of a gun. You son of a... What Sam Hill are we talking about? (laughs) Hey, we talked about that last episode. Um, So, this Lowell... Who is it? David Lowell Rich. David Lowell Rich. 
Uh, do you think he made a lot of money? I I hope not. I hope he gets, like was broke all of his life just for the bit. He's like, yeah, you all thought I was rich. Here I am eating a bunch of ramen, and I'm crying into my pillow at night. <laughs> it's taking everything in my power not to make a ramen joke. What's a what's a ramen joke? I can't say it. We're a family friendly podcast. What were you? <laughs> all right. So what did, yeah, he hasn't actually do? done too much. He's done a little bit. He's just like. Kind of not really a well-known director, to be completely frank. Um, I just really want to be frank. That's... No, he's rich, Derek. He's not frank. I mean, he did direct like one episode of The Twilight Zone. He directed a movie called The Defection of Simus Kudrika. Wow. That is that is quite a, it's a, it's it was a like TV his, movie specifically. Yeah. <laughs> not highest. just a movie, a TV movie. And there's there's a difference between those two there. So I couldn't find anything on the budget for this film. Okay. I'm assuming it was... Fairly decent because of the production. Yeah. Like the production value of the movie. Specifically the main like the main location of the yeah. movie. It's this big kind of ritzy house. Also, there were so many cats in this movie. So oh, that's I'm true. assuming they at least had one animal wrangler. Well, yeah, and they had to hoping. buy all the had to buy all the meow mix for all of them, you know. Don't say that word. Sorry, sorry. There's literally three Garfields in the room with us right now. You can't say the word meow. meow oh meow. wait, Garfield doesn't like meow mix. I forgot. He likes lasagna. <laughs> you trying to jacuzzi? Jacuzzi. Trying to trip I me up. Bleeped that. That was innuendo. <laughs> so, because uh, it was infamatory towards meow mix. Uh, the funny, yeah. the funny thing about not knowing the budget for this movie, this movie grossed one point three million dollars. That's a lot, for, but based on so much, based on knowing not so how much, much it put, we'll we'll assume they made money. Maybe. I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. So there's no critic score for this movie, but the audience score was sitting at a, it's a prime, juicy 29. It was sitting it's at a, a nice 29, actually. That's higher than I was expecting. I imagine the tomato in this situation mm -hmm. is... Can we start doing this every episode? Yeah, exactly. I think that this Come in, step is, into our world. You're in Tomato Tower. What's that? You walk into the elevator. There is no top floor. It's just a wet, squishy tomato, and you push on it, and a little bit of goop comes out of gross. it. And then you... Zoom, Shoot all the way up to the top floor. Who's that? It's the penthouse office of Mr. Tomato. Penthouse office. Penthouse office and then, of Mr. Tomato. I like tomato. to imagine you walk into the office and there's like a bunch of tomato plants. Yeah. And each one is like 10%, right? There's yeah. Like 10, so there's a, 10 tomato plants, right? Yeah. Do you think they keep them in order like that? Like so oh, yeah. as, they're, as they're growing, they're 10%, they're bigger. There's a bunch of spoiled ones You that walk they keep in, in a back room. This is actually how it's judged. So to Mr. Yeah. Tomato, he's sitting in his chair. He's mm -hmm. facing the window. He would never make eye contact. No, with of course not. Unless, it's of course, you hit player. that 100%. Yes. You hit that 100%, you get a handshake. Yeah. You get a little vine. But you still, he does not look at you when you walk in the room, no, no matter no, where no, you're no, at. No, 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 no. Because he can get 101%. So I imagine you either walk in with the DVD in your hands, mm -hmm. right? Or the Blu-ray or the, yeah. the Ultra HD or, or maybe you a have little to coupon wait for Voodoo. Or you can't go uh, until it's like streaming on Netflix and then gets taken <laughs> off at some point. Ugh, those you probably don't even take the you don't even take the trip. Because no. honestly, it's not a it's exactly. not an easy trip it's, to make. It's a long trip. It's like four hours. It's the of same walking. distance from everywhere. It doesn't matter where you start yep. walking. You have to walk for four hours from where you are currently standing to make it to <laughs> Tomato Tower. And if you stop walking or you turn around and look around like Hades Town, yeah, you turn around and look back <laughs> another four hours. Hours. Another four hours. The same direct that direction. Now. I knew this one guy who was, who was walking Orpheus? for like six days. He was just kept walking. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Orpheus is still walking. He's still go he cannot get to Tomato Tower, even though he's got the coveted hundred. We keep telling him, quit looking back. Quit looking back, Judge. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so you got the ten plants, right? The tomato yeah. like holds up a number or something. He says like three or four, right? Right. That's the plant you go to. Okay. And that's where you pick your tomato. Ooh, so you pick your own. Yeah. So like around 50% mm -hmm. is when they start getting rotten and going backwards. Yeah. They start getting fresher. So I imagine like 50% yeah. is like a, a green tomato that if you leave on the counter for a while, it's going to start to ripen. It's going to get a little red. I like to think they, right. th you go to like the four, right? And you go and you pick off. It, it's whatever speaks to you. You pull out the right tomato. Yeah. And based on what you pull and what is called out to you, it's like could be a 44, a 47. Exactly. Like exactly. they're different on, on the 40 plant. And, and the director in the, of the movie is the only one who can see the number. Yes. So he like pulls off the tomato and he turns it and like it like turns gold and it yes. shows him the number. It like etches itself into the tomato right yeah. before your eyes. Yeah. It's gorgeous. So this this movie, he was really in a crappy situation yeah. because tomato hold up a two. Tomato hold up a <laughs> tomato two. Tomato hold up a two. <laughs> that tomato hold up a two. <laughs> you got it. You come cool? up into tomato tower, tomato hold up the two. And he's like 
crap, I, I got a 20% movie. No, oh, this is oh, awful. Like, but he walks up, he takes the tomato off. It's like, it's like it, it smells really, really bad. And like when it starts etching yeah. the, the nine, it's you a worm. The worm like comes oh, out and starts like No, that's cute. Nine. A worm like eats yeah. out into the shape of yeah. the of the number. But then when you if you pick that, oh, we can't even talk about what happens if you pick the hundred. It's just, it's unfathomable. It's unfathomable. unfathomable. Truly, yeah. It's it's a real like Hellraiser situation up in there. Anyway, Crazy so things happen. Now that we've you created a more disciple more. of the tomato. <laughs> Every so often, we got to check back in with Tomato Tower. <laughs> you might be asking, what goes on in every floor underneath? We don't know. We'll, we'll talk about them in later episodes. None sure. of the buttons work. We've tried. Derek and I made the trek four yeah, hours. We Derek did. was eight. He looked back once, and I made fun of him vigorously. The vigorously. <laughs> I, I tried to get you to turn around after I turned around, but you were too far away. No, yeah, exactly. Around. I had my AirPods in, so I couldn't, I couldn't even hear you. <laughs> so Letterboxd is sitting at a 3.1. Gosh, that's where we're at still. And Man. IMDb is at a 6.1. So it's kind of all over the board here a little bit. I, I would say the IMDb is a little higher than yeah. the normal, and you know, Letterbox is around the middle. Exactly, ground. yeah. So, so um, should we discuss the uh, the Rotten Tomatoes reviews? Oh yeah. Or review? Uh, there is one here. So Derek, you know what that means? If there's one, I'm going to read an audience review. Actually. Oh, but I like reading them together. Oh, we can read it at the same time. It's just it's just a silly thing that we did once. Are you ready for this? <laughs> All right. <clears throat> from Steve Biodrowski, which sounds like a fake name from Cine, Cine Fantastique. Cool. All right, ready? One, two, three. Eye, Eye of the, the cat, cat mixes conventional, conventional murder melodrama with suggestions of the supernatural to create an intriguing, if oddball, mixture. It, it is, is not, not a perfectly balanced cocktail, cocktail but, if but if you swallow it whole, it will get you buzzed. Rated three out of five, January 30th, 2024. Yeah, so, hey, so that uh, was actually kind of. Families yeah, love awesome. Hamilton, so I think we're on the we're on the right track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so when you're showing this to your bishop at the next ward function, uh, make sure that he hears that bit because I think he'll really like. Yeah, it. Yeah, he's really he's gonna go nuts for that, and then he's gonna be like, you know, let's check out what these guys got. Let's go back like two episodes and then soil himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, those boys were really entertaining. Listen, I, I think I want to show them to all my kids. There are some start back at episode one. Oh, this is still not that bad. Pretty family friendly. Yeah, yeah. Let's put on episode two. Oh. oh, 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 oh. Oh. There are still times that like people come up to me and they ask me about my podcast sounding like they want to try to listen to it. I'm like, please don't. I don't. You, this is not for you. And then sometimes like I'll get from people that are like, hey, I, I listen to your podcast. I'm like, you? Really, though? You've heard me say those things? And they say it like with a smile on their face. I'm like, you heard that and didn't immediately turn it off? You heard me being a freaking fiend of a horse for like <laughs> episodes on episodes? Oh, my gosh. Did you want to read any audience reviews? Or nah, you chill? let's expectate. Let's expectate. I'm expectating. That's all our bits, right? Yeah, I think that's that's all our bits, are our, our riffs, yeah, bits, gaffs. Mood. Let's get into it. Um, So expectation, generally speaking, I was thinking... This this one was going to feel like a long one. When yeah. we watched the trailer, it felt like it was going to be like a melodrama. Yeah. Like just, it was an hour and 40 minutes of where uh, just, just about. And it was like, this one's going to feel like it takes its time to get there, especially since we've been doing a lot of like hour and a half movies. So just yeah. in comparison, this one was going to be long. Uh, I thought it was going to laugh a lot. Like yeah. I thought it would just bring mm -hmm. so much joy to me in all the wrong ways. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna flip flip it around. Actually, my first expectation is now going to be my last expectation. Derek's looking over and he he sees he sees what it is. <laughs> um, my 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 first expectation will be ridiculous editing that will make us laugh. There were some very obvious like green screen effects of like you know a woman running down a hill and she looks kind of silly and there's people driving in a car and just the fact that it was made in 1969. People were doing weird things and with movies those days. It's so, so true. Yeah. So I, I was expecting there to be some like really funny editing going on so i'm actually gonna flip around my first expectation oh. and make it my last expectation. oh yeah sure yeah sure it, there was you're a follower they were basically the exact same thing okay so we're gonna do it okay um yeah a ridiculous plot was what i was going for yeah. like it it seemed like the plot was going to be crazy anyway from what we knew from the trailer that it was a woman with a bunch of cats yes and they were she was trying to get murdered i knew very little ah. about it if i'm being honest ah. <laughs> That's my. <laughs> That's yours. <laughs> um, I, my next expectation was so gosh darn melodramatic. It's just like really. <laughs> that was Derek's laughing because I did not write gosh darn. <laughs> But I'm saying Why gosh darn on the in your notes. I forgot. I didn't think about it. God. God. But yeah, I was thinking it was going to be so gosh dang ding darn melodramatic in this one. And yep. that's basically all I need to say. Stuffed cats. 
Stuffed cats. Stuffed cats. I just expected so many because like we watched Night of the Lampus. And <laughs> and in that movie there were so many stuffed animal buttons. Yes. So I just expected the same thing. I was really expecting very similar things. Um I said off screen kills for oh, sure. Yeah. Another one of those, like what does Derek call it? The off screen kill screen roll around or whatever you said a couple <laughs> off, episodes ago. Off screen kill screen kill screen mode. But yeah, basically you see a person yeah. run off screen chasing getting chased by something, they die off screen, and then maybe you get a close up of their dead body, yeah, right? Absolutely. So like that's that's kind of what I was expecting from this one based on the vibe in the trailer. For sure. I also expected that. I think that's probably what I meant by stuffed cats. Um <laughs> some wild attempt at being psycho. Like oh, yeah. someone trying to be someone, some misdirection, mommy issues, that kind of thing. I mean, you really find out here is like who has the sauce was it alfred hitchcock or was it the stefano jim jim bon. jim jimbo jim stefano bon Jovi. whatever his name was and then uh, my next expectation was kind of in line with yours about the stuffed cats i said probably someone wrestling with a puppet of a cat because yeah. that always happens always. you know in movies like this where people are getting attacked by animals they just get a, a, a stuffed cat you know thrown at them and they're like oh oh no get it off of me as they're ho- holding it onto their body like gremlins gremlins yeah gremlins had that that Bonkers of a plot, <laughs> um, and then my lo- you mean my- like hobgoblins? That one, that one, yeah. Hobgoblins, hobgoblins Gremlins did that is exact- the real one. Yeah, Gremlins, the the, the not rip off. Okay. Uh, then my second to last one is Hitchcock esque shots. Yep, like I knew that they were gonna take Hitchcock and be like, "Hey, Psycho worked. Let's make it with cats." Yep. So, hey, you want to say the last one? At the same let's time? say our final expectation. Maybe we do it with a little bit of ba 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 da ba 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 da cat actors. Cat actors, cat actors, cat actors. You get a bunch of cats and you put them on the screen. And they're the scariest thing that you've ever seen. Cats are scary and they like to kill. They'll make you change your aunt's will. Cats here and they make you die. Cat actors. They're scary when you look them in the eye. Cat Actors, <laughs> cat, cat actors. actors, genuinely shocked at that was, the quality. Of I was terrible. Did Derek, you write that? Where's the script? No, <laughs> did you write that? Derek, that was so good. Derek loves to do improv, and I do not. It terrifies me. But you're so, so good at literally it. in that instance. I was like, I, I, I felt like there was a gun held up to me by With God. my eyes. Yes, <laughs> Derek's sitting here staring daggers at me. Uh, cat actors, yeah, that's what that was an expectation. Of I was trying to do it in a different like melody than kid actors, but it just kind of happened. <laughs> I love it. He can... was it was great. different enough. Yeah. But yeah, so there were cat cats actors. in the movie expecting them to act. Yeah. What more can you say? Do Absolutely. you have anything else to add on to that? No, that's it. Yeah. Well, Derek, let's cozy up all nice and Ooh, curled up in a little ball. I've got the, myself a cup of tea in the sunlight. But it's here. green tea, not to offend the kiddos. <laughs> Because, yeah, all other teas offend people. Passion Ooh. tea? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's dive into the, uh, the the movie Eye of the Cat from 1969. It's the eye of the kitty. It's the thrill of the fight. Dun, Rising dun, up dun, with its eyes bulging out dun, real dun, big. It's the dun, last confrontation dun, that you have dun, with your cat. Dun, if you're having dun, a scratch dun, on dun, your dun, face, dun, you get toxoplasmosis. <laughs> Derek. <laughs> Derek. Anyways, let's start talking about the You movie. get what? Toxoplasmosis. Tox, tox, one more time. Toxoplasmosis. Toxoplasmosis. Hey, guys. Say it with me, kids. Toxoplasmosis. I think. Welcome back to Sesame Street with our puppet, Science Jim, here to tell you about toxoplasmosis. Oh, I'm on Sesame Street? Oh, gosh, I got to get with my manager and make sure he books me better. I can't be on this show. No, no, keep me away. Don't let me go near the oh, count it's... on Sesame Street. <laughs> I must be leaving. Go, go, go. Um, so those who Count don't know what toxoplasmosis is, it's a disease caused by single cell parasite, celled parasite called Toxoplasma Gandhi. Not to be confused with the dictator. Not to be confused with the Mahatma <laughs> variety. Is he a dictator? I don't think so. <laughs> Just a guy. <laughs> just, yeah, just a guy. <laughs> Goodness. Um. Anyway, so basically, toxoplasmosis could come from from like uh from raw meat, or more commonly, it comes from the feces of your kittens. And if it gets Ew. in your eyes, or if it gets in your your skin somehow, like through a cut or something, then you start going a little crazy. Yeah. And you start to imagine things and hallucinate things, and then eventually die. Oh, okay. It's pretty, so this, so it's it is pretty, fatal. Oh, absolutely. It's it's. I mean, it's not like fatal, 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 fatal. But like. <laughs> It it actually happens very very frequently. Uh-huh. I just read this in the, 
Uh huh. It can't be fatal. But uh, like more than 60 billion people in the U.S. have been infected at some point. Whoa. So okay. it's actually pretty common. So it's not often fatal. Well, listen. You've got a cat. I've got a cat. Uh, Everybody's got a cat. Everybody's you look got a at cat. Your neighbor, he's got a cat. Everyone's Everybody, got a cat. It's every- Oprah up in here. Everyone, look you on your seat. You get a cat. You get a cat. You get a cat. You you get a cat. Get a cat. Everybody gets a cat. <laughs> and everybody gets toxoprosmosis. What's it? Plasmosis. A- Plasmosis. Gosh, it was so close. Anyway, gosh darn it. Ding, ding it, dang. You almost slipped Frick. up. Frick. You almost slipped up, dude. <laughs> Anyway, I just need to look up like all of left. the like swear replacements. I said to do that in the last episode, and never we did. Never did. Anyway, let's start talking about the movie. <laughs> yes, okay. You guys get it. Don't be scared. Just like wash your hands if you get cat poop on them. Really, basically. Though. Yeah, don't get your hands all up in there, scooping them all up and put them into your bag for for lunch later. You know, don't wipe your eyes after the fact. And like, also, don't be silly. If you start hallucinating. That's pretty cool. That's kind of cool. Like, right? tell me about it. Oh, yeah, like I want to. I want to know what you're. What's, I've what's heard up? some hallucination stories. What's going on in your crazy mind? Kind of cool. Kind of dope. Kind of like, crazy. Honestly, arguably, kind of the most metal thing that could ever happen. But maybe see a doctor. <laughs> but maybe see a doctor. <laughs> Be metal about it though. But like, go but, see like, a doctor. Maybe see a doctor. Just don't bring a metal into your MRI. <laughs> Derek, will you look up all of, like swear replacement words while I start out this movie? <laughs> so are you good? You good, Derek? <laughs> This episode is insane. Oh, it's, you take it's away so... our filth, and we're funny. Maybe is we should do the, this every is that episode. The secret? We just need to like try our darndest, our, Ooh. our dangdest. Ooh, I was close there for Ooh. a second. Anyway, so we start with the silhouette of cats walking across the screen over an image of a town. It's like it's already starting out feeling very late sixties, early seventies corniness of like the edits that are going on in the movie. So you see the you see what's up, Derek. You okay? (laughs) He's laughing over there. So you start off with that. You see cats walking across the screen. They're thus far not looking very scary. I'm not feeling much horror from any of these cats whatsoever. There were just a bunch of cute little kitties walking across the screen. It kind of felt like James Bond. Like like the silhouettes of the women in James Bond, but it was all cats. Totally. So um, we see we see a, a man pushing a woman in a wheelchair, and there is always a cat nearby. There's this one orange cat that kind of follows this woman throughout the entire movie, and we we of course we started calling him Garfield. So Garfield is gonna hang out with us for the rest of this movie. I know you may be sick of all the of all these Garfield bits, but we're gonna we're gonna keep him around for a little bit. Well, yeah. I mean, come on. It was an orange cat. Yes, it was an orange tabby. What we are you were sitting there like, what are we supposed to do? Well, Not call him Garfield. You give a you give a man an orange tabby, he makes it a Garfi. <laughs> By peanut butter and jelly. What did you think we were gonna do? What? I found a list of Leaping Lizards, it's Garfi. Yeah, man. <laughs> there are a lot so of we're this. Gonna use Aw, this. noodles. <laughs> that would have been great for your ramen joke you didn't have. Ah, McCrob. McCrob? M E C R O B. What does that even mean? What 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 are these? I don't know, but I'm gonna keep anytime I'm gonna leave this up right here. Yep. And then anytime you gotta swear, just some of them just, get a little sh- close. Like son of a mother trucker is like, a little it's a little yuck. close for me. Like yuck. Like, like yuck. poopy. <laughs> That's <laughs> Right. William Shatner is one of them. <laughs> All right, stop laughing at that. Talk Sorry. about the movie. Okay, so I am really enjoying the beginning of this movie. There are some fun shots that Derek compared to Hideo Kojima. Is that what you said? Mm. Or like Cowboy yeah. Bebop, where it's like multiple shots in like panels, almost split up like a comic book. That's the best way I can describe them. I was excited them. for this to continue through the movie, and, and it, it did stopped. not. It, it was only in the intro. It only existed in the intro sequence, which is sad. I would have liked to see more of this stuff. That's the kind of editing you would see throughout something like those Italian giallo films. Yeah. Like that's something that is throughout the entire entire movie not for one sequence right i yelled criminy they didn't continue oh my goodness uh, so so this dude brings uh this lady in a wheelchair to a salon and at the salon this wheelchair woman just starts to cough and have a fit and suddenly yeah. like you know it was very upsetting hell kind of breaks loose the place not the not the swear does that count heck breaks loose i don't know does that count ah fudge berries oh goodness <laughs> I, I keep looking at the ones geez geez terwilligers these are these can't be real, Derek. This is crazy. That. This, yeah. this <laughs> the website is called wehavekids.com. Parenting 101. <laughs> Great cuss word as alternatives. Can you imagine sitting your child down and being like, okay, Timmy, so we're gonna talk about swear when you hear alternatives peep. today. <laughs> How about maybe it's try staying and said Judas Priest? We'll try that one. <laughs> and anytime and rice. anytime you hear beep, we're well, gonna say corn nuts instead now i'm gonna test you we're gonna we're gonna study this list i'm gonna say number 38 and derek what's number 38 uh holy cow there we go good tim i actually say that one all the time that's that's a that's a real one i do love the idea that people are like i'm gonna teach my kids to swear using these words yeah 
It's like, okay, so they still have, if you don't want them to swear at all, just don't. It takes have more a way effort to, to do it that. this way. Like, I don't know. It just seems weird. Maybe just don't have swearing in your vocabulary yeah. if you're not going to swear. Either way. So, so woman at the salon in the wheelchair, she starts to cough and have a fit, and then the opening title sequence starts. Yep. And yeah, that's basically all that happens in that. So now we get to, into the movie proper. There's this lead, the lead lady here, her name is Cassia Lancaster, helps herself not into Lannister some man's house. No, Lancaster. We are a family friendly episode. She just helps herself into this man's house, and this man is Wiley. He's going to be the main guy of the movie. And she just like breaks into his room where he has a woman who was nude in his bedroom. <laughs> We're describing the movie. I mean, what are we going to do? Just she, not is, mention she is without clothing. Oh, yeah, so she is without clothing. She's without Just clothing. Just as when I came out as a wee babe, I was without clothing. Yes. She's, the, in, she's in her birthday suit. There and, it is. And my mother was like, what should I name my son? And the doctor was like, you got to come up with a name. And she looked at her husband and said, why Lee? Why don't you come up with a name? And he was ah, like, yes, it's me, Lee. I'm smoking my pipe. Oh, why Lee? Ah, uh, yes. Why well, Lee? Well, th oh, no, that's a wonderful name. Yes, yes, yes. My dear wife, you've, you've done it again. By Jove. Oh, there's that silly coyote again. Who on a stick? You've done it again. <laughs> Wife of mine. Oh, mother <laughs> smucker. That I, ah, I didn't duck, swear. I duck said water. Smucker, like as in the peanut butter. <laughs> this is funnier oh, than anything berries. we could ever come up with on our own. <laughs> so Wiley. Yeah, all credit to wehavekids.com. Yes, thank you, wehavekids.com. <laughs> Goodness. Not sponsoring this episode. Not sponsoring. We'll never sponsor any of our episodes. I, <laughs> I don't think. know. Maybe. Maybe this one. Who knows? <laughs> but so Cassia helps herself into Wiley's house. He has a woman there he was sleeping with. And she she basically just like tells this man who she does not know in the slightest. She's like, come with me. He goes, well, okay. Sorry. Maybe girlfriend of mine. I'm going with this <laughs> random woman in the middle of the night. Yeah. Like he was asleep. Both was of them were. It. He's just like, yeah, sure. Why not? I'll come with you. So, also, what a... What a what a frog move! <laughs> what a frog! What the frog! Like you to just like have slept with this woman. They just took yeah, a little nap. That's really frogged and up. It's really frogged up. <laughs> and he's just like, oh, this other woman's in my house now. I'm gonna go with her. Really though, you go with that. Late sixties, I guess. I don't know. Maybe it was a different time. I mean, it was for sure. I mean, literally, by by definition, by definition, is a different time. time yeah. But so she takes him away. They take this really goofy looking car ride that is definitely like on a sound stage. Where <laughs> Derek was mad though because the woman playing Cassia in this. Let's see. Let's let's Cassiopeia. call her out because she did because she did a wonderful job. Uh, Gail Hennicut. That's that's a honey honeycut. Honey, I cut myself. It's nothing. Oh, are you okay? <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> it's me, Lee. Wife, what are you doing in the kitchen? We're, uh, we're, flipping, we're flipping the gender roles. I'm the one in the kitchen in this situation. Oh, I'm just getting home from work. Yeah, you're working at the Home Depot being a carpenter. <laughs> what? <laughs> do you even know what I do all day? <laughs> of course I do. I'm Lee. <laughs> Why, Lee? <laughs> what, Mom? <laughs> <laughs> I bet that gets real confusing in that. Oh family. goodness. This woman does a very good job at like pretending to drive a car in a in a very fake situation. And Derek was mad. He wanted her to be worse at driving the car. Oh yeah. Because she was like calmly turning the steering wheel like in a normal person manner. Yeah, like well, eyes on the road. Every movie I've ever seen has taught me to swing back and forth as fast Swinging as I can. It, in that steering it, steering it, looking over at the buddy next to you. You're like, you're not driving that car. But no this way, woman, no how. She was watching the road. She was perfect ten and two. I I'm just Yes, honestly, upset. the form, a 10 out of 10, really, for you. Which is upsetting. It, it, it's sad. I wanted you know to be funny. You know what I said about that? I said, dang rabbit. <laughs> dang rabbit. I said, daggummit. <laughs> Jumping Jimmy. <laughs> We're never... Merlin's in... pants. We're... <laughs> His <laughs> pants? He's His pants. pants now. <laughs> Can we just work top to bottom? Merlin's beard. Merlin's, Merlin's robe. Pants. Merlin's bracelet. <laughs> Merlin's kneecaps. Merlin's shoes. Okay. That's, that's all. That's it. That's all. That's. that's Would someone all. please take that's, everything we just said that's and everything turn it he's into wearing. a drawing of just like a man that's only made up of those things? That's all he's wearing. I hope we got enough things there. Yep. And he's got shoes, so his feet are covered. He's fine. <laughs> yeah. That, that, whew, can't even. So Cassia takes Wiley. She brings him to that salon that we saw in the beginning. I guess she works there. Um, and she tells him to remove his clothes and shower. And this is worth mentioning. I wrote this in all caps. As he is in the shower, first, first of all, he easily is like, oh, yeah, of course I'll take my clothes off. Yeah, let's do this. He gets in the shower. He's like, oh. He is not family friendly. Alone. He is super not family. A lot of this movie is not family friendly. Just in the, the general horniness of it all. Yeah. But so while he's in the shower, there is what, what we called the psycho cat shot. Yes. Because it's, okay, everybody knows the famous scene from Psycho. Of course. Psycho. <laughs> everyone loves the scene from Psycho. I've got a good issue for Psycho. It's me, Alvin Hitchcock. And 
Anyway, you all know the scene from Psycho, right? Where the woman goes in the shower and she's naked mm. and the door is cl- There's the curtain. The curtain, right? yeah, of course. I Curtain's love that scene. Closed. Great curtain. And then a woman walks in He's brandishing in my top a ten knife. Curtain scenes. Brandishing a knife. And she oh, goes, knife. Reek, 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 reek. <laughs> Right into the, into the curtain, right? Right and into she stares it, yeah. right into the woman's yeah, chest. Yeah. And my favourite thing about this scene, right? What's your favourite thing They about didn't it? use blood. They used Hershey's syrup. syrup. Very yeah. famous, right? Of course, it's in black and white. It's Who like, needs to know? I'm a, I'm a film bro. I have to tell everyone I know that that was Hershey's syrup. It's like when you're watching Lord of the Rings. Then they kick the helmet. He really, he broke, really his broke his toe. toe. Yeah. He really broke it. Anyway, so the craziest thing about this scene, though, What's was that? the misdirection of it. Yep. Because I'm going to talk about it. Can I talk about it? You can talk about it. Because the movie sets up that this woman in the shower, she's going to be our main character. But then she dies. But then she and dies. And it's like maybe half hour into the movie. <laughs> and the movie takes a turn from there. And it's yeah, glorious. It's, it's great. It's a wonderful Really great movie. misdirection. This movie did not do that. But no. it sure did have a cat pretending to be the, the woman going to stab the didn't other Didn't misdirect. Guy. In a sense, the movie did kind of misdirect us because it comes yeah, apparent to me pretty quick. Cats are not in this the way that I had expected them nope. to be right at or, the start. Or quite at all. Or much at all, really, though. So so basically, this woman, Cassia, is giving Wiley like, this entirely nice like salon treatment. She's washing his hair, giving him this mud mask. You know, She's giving him this nice massage. Like It's a whole wonderful experience because what, what we find out is that she is basically like, you know how when you go to a salon or a barbershop, you typically have the same person you go to? Yeah. Well, this woman who was in the wheelchair is Wiley's aunt or aunt, <gasps> whatever you... Wh- wh- wherever you're you're at and you want to say it um so they're related and so aunt. she the aunt aunt um aunt danny and danny um talks a lot about this man wiley yeah. and she was like hmm okay she finds out that he has he has a, a chance to be like the the sole heir the beneficiary of her will and all of this fortune because apparently aunt danny real rich mega rich yeah. so she basically talks about how she wants she's giving him this really nice treat, treatment basically giving him the whole like you know steak dinner treatment here to say will you help me kill your aunt so that I can get a bunch of money out of her she's like she talks about you a so lot she weird. calls you her weird prince immediately out the gate there is something so weird confusing something strange about the relationship between this aunt and and Wiley there is something yeah. very off putting here and I think that can I can I pose you a may. theory absolutely I think that really in reality uh, Aunt Danny or Danielle, however yes. you would like to say her name. Um, she only goes by Nanny in the movie, so we'll call her that. Um, <laughs> I think that she watched a lot of Looney Tunes. Mm-hmm. And she saw Wiley e. Coyote uh-huh. throughout the entire film growing up. Yeah. Fascination. Almost an awakening. Yes, exactly. Came from Wiley e. Coyote. Awake, an awakening within herself. Yes. She really found herself she really in that. She really had a... Not um, really about the Roadrunner, you know, too fast mm, for her, you know, too swift. Yeah, she wasn't into the Meep Meep. Uh, no, she was not a lot of Meep Meep. She was more into the not meep meep. You yes, know, exactly. Uh, the so, silence. She loves the strong she, silent type. She loved type. the wily e. coyote silence. Yes. So anyway, when her nephew was born, uh, she she was a little confused because uh because he was named Wiley. <laughs> <laughs> you had nowhere to go. No, I'm just trying to make him family friendly. <laughs> <laughs> you get, if you're reading between the lines, i.e., how you read sheet music, y- sure, uh, you, then you probably. <laughs> Can you continue the movie? Yes, I can you take me movie? out of this hole. I'll take, I'll take over. I'll take over. <laughs> there is an odd thing that happens where we find out that this this aunt was also like romantically intermingled with his with Wiley's dad. Yeah, which was like super the confusing. mom the mom died, and this aunt was actually like his mistress. So I don't even know if he's like legally related, like by blood related to this aunt. I don't need movies to spell things out for me, but sometimes, but sometimes it would be nice to know relations. Like sometimes it is very me, convoluted. Maybe pause the movie, have like Steve Jobs walk on with a like a PowerPoint have presentation. Have Garfield walk on for this one, you know? I, hey guys, I mean, it's me. It's really Garfield. Yeah, it's I'm, I'm here to explain. So that's not his real aunt by blood. It's actually his dad's mistress. And he maybe blames her a little bit for the death of his mom. And it's a very traumatic experience. And when he was a kid, he was scared by a cat. Did you know that? So I actually... Did only, you know I, I only knew Mondays? Uh, yeah, I did. <laughs> I only knew half of that, though. <laughs> you watched the movie with me. I sure did. I Well, I thought I thought it was like that, that Aunt Danny was like his dad's... Uh, not sister. sister Definitely not law. sister. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. But that's why I'm saying they need to spell things out for me. Is it a Lannister situation instead of a Lancaster situation? True, Are true. they brother and sister? Because that's weird. It's weird no matter what. Everything about it is weird. <laughs> so anyway, Wiley, like, 
he he hears a cat because mind you remember how we said there was an orange cat garfield that went into the salon at the beginning of the movie that cat is still here okay but but he didn't hear a cat no my guy didn't hear anything he just thinks he hears a noise in the corner and he's like oh he, it's a cat he freaks oh, out oh honey it's a cat he has like a whole panic attack oh. about this and then he regresses to this like story about him when he was a child and he's and he's like oh i was i was terrified of cats as a kid i was laying in my crib and this black cat jumped up into my crib and tried to like smother me with its mouth on my mouth and like it sounds like you had a little bit of a a moist dream (laughs) can i say that moist is arguably worse than just saying let's just say wet (laughs) a wet dream arguably worse about about a cat but anyway so yeah he's terrified of cats which has a name it's called allurophobia Yep. Allurophobia, a real thing, is basically just the fear of cats, right? Yeah, do you want me to talk about it? Yeah, just one it. sentence. <laughs> go for it. It's the persistent and excessive fear of cats. There you go. Mic drop. Mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> Science Jim on the mic, and he's out. We're done rapping. We've, we've done enough rapping. Allurophobia, gatophobia, catphobia. Yeah. Gatophobia. So as he's telling... <laughs> that's beautiful. Gatophobia. <laughs> what do you got? Oh, I got the phobia. I got ophobia. Oh, no, don't say don't that. Don't say the letter O. I spent a year on Sesame Street. <laughs> I can't stand the letter O. We sing the, ABC, the, the, the ABCs. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O. I couldn't skip it if I tried. I tried to skip it. I also tried to skip it. L, M, N, P. M, N, P. Not in this episode. We're never going to start this movie. We have We've to keep started. going. We're it's, never we're still at the beginning. Yeah, but it's quick. Okay. So while he's telling the story about how he was almost smothered to death by this cat as a child, the orange cat, the tabby Garfield, jumps onto him and then he throws it into some like sparking electrical equipment, likely killing it. Yeah. It was actually we were worried. Derek did some research to see I if did. like animals were harmed in the making of this movie. I could not confirm or deny. Hard to tell. It's from 1969. I, There's not a lot, not a lot of give. Here. I will say that I do not want to support this movie in the sense of like paying for anything, even though no one from this movie is getting anything. It's on Just YouTube. because the treatment of the animals wasn't great. It was uncomfortable at yes. times. No, I don't think any animals were harmed. No. I just don't think they were in good environments. That's the only shot that really was like that. And that cat could have got hurt. Yeah. Because but it hit it like did, an electrical box. But it did kind of seem like a fake animal they were throwing. Yeah. So it was, so it was a quick shot. I'm hoping... Hoping. Caveat for the rest of the movie. So, yeah. So, that happens, and he, they rush out of there, right? Then, it's like, then it's, she's driving him home, like, either the next day or the morning. I don't really know the timeline of things, how they worked here. Cassia drops Wiley off at home the next morning. They plan to meet later. Wiley goes to visit his brother, because he thought it was weird that this aunt of his kept talking about him. He's like, she's not going to give the money to my brother, Luke. And she's like, she's never mentioned anyone named Luke. This aunt is obsessed with Wiley. All she does is talk about him. She goes to her little salon lady and she sits here and talks about her beautiful baby boy, Wiley, and how he used to live with her, but now he doesn't. And it's kind of a whole thing. So that's why she's going to him to get him on this murder plot because she's like, she's obsessed with you. You're you're our ace in the hole. We can get a bunch of money now, right? So Wiley goes to visit his brother, Luke, who still lives with Aunt Danny. And I was, I, for a second, he was I was so mad because they're having, scared. they're having a conversation and he has, I counted like 16 glasses of milk in Not his fridge. glasses though, full bottles. Full bottles of milk. Yeah. That stuff there goes was bad. Least, there was at least two cows worth of milk yeah. in that fridge. But then I realized, okay, he's in this house and the aunt has a ton of cats. So maybe yeah. that's, maybe that's why where all the milk is going, right? Even though, isn't that like one of the, isn't that like a myth? Like you shouldn't be giving cats milk? Well, yeah, it, too much calcium is bad for any animal. Yeah, like, exactly. So, like a little sip of sip of kit. Listen, cat milk, gather milk. around the, gather around your radio, kids. We'll tell you, don't give that cat milk. That cat doesn't want milk. Just like, just like mice don't like cheese. Gee willikers. And, and, and bunnies don't like rabbits and men don't like hamburgers. And it's men don't pee. And pee. <laughs> So Wiley is questioning why I Luke is still died. staying here with her. And he's like, is it for the money? Uh. So Wiley goes in, in Aunt Danny's room to visit her. And she has like 30 cats in this bedroom with her. And so he gets freaked out, obviously, because he has a lorophobia and he's yeah. scared of cats. So he books it. He's like, he's nope, got never mind. Phobia. Bye. He goes back to Cassia's like apartment or something and kind of like angrily throws her around being like, you you sent me there to this house knowing there were a bunch of cats. And she's like, baby, how could I have known there were going to be a bunch of cats there? I never would have done that. Oh, no. Yeah. So she 
claims she had no idea there were going to be all these cats. And he, he's so serious about these cats, too. He's like, cats are not to be taken lightly. Like, he, yeah. he's very superstitious. He's not take only him, take him heavily. He's not only afraid. Heavily. He's not only afraid of cats. He, like, has this whole, like, big super superstition around them. But oh, so, yeah. <laughs> he's convinced they're, like, aliens from another planet, I swear. He, yeah, he, he thinks something supernatural is going to happen. Who knows? Um, and then they... Um, they dance with no clothes on, very if good. I may be so. Hey, that was good. And then and, 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 my hand. And they, thank you. Thank very you very good. much. Did I get the job? You censored. <laughs> and then they turn in for the night. And she is really attempting to convince him to do this job. Because even after they do their no pants dance, they're like, <laughs> he's like, you've done your best, but I'm still not going to that house. She's like, come no on, you got to do it. <laughs> the next day, uh, Wiley and Cassia go to a park where Luke is wheeling around uh, the ant, right? And so he like... Wiley posts up next to a tree and makes it look like they ran into each other by accident. And Aunt Danny immediately sends Luke away. She's like, this is a private matter. Like, give us our space. Yeah, Luke is pissed. Luke is just like the butt of the joke the entire movie. He's such a, like, the, the poor man. He's basically a waste of space. Yeah, it's kind of sad. But so she wants some privacy with Wiley. And so he's discussing the possibility of maybe coming back with her. But he tells her he doesn't like the cats. And, the, and he's like, can't have the cats around. I'm not here. And she's like, oh, well, I hate Luke. So, like, the cats are the sole heir of my will and he Derek will you d please demonstrate to me the laugh that he displays here and then for the rest of the movie <laughs> is the Joker back in here you want to know how I got these cats <laughs> it, was, it was with, with catnip you want to know how I got these scars on, on my arm? Cat. My cat scratched me. You got those from those white claws. Yeah, See those claws. Thing? I really got I'm not me. doing a Joker impression because you're making a fool of yourself <laughs> for the both of us. I'm sorry. No, it was great. I loved it. But so he basically says, you know, I hate these cats. I can't live there if, if they're there. She's like, oh, but they're the, the, the sole heir of my will. But I would quickly get rid of them if it means you'll come back. So like, no problem. She's like, yeah. okay, cool. Cats cool. are gone. Cats are gone. Yeah. Bye. So how do they get rid of the cats? Oh, Luke. God. Luke, the brother, takes a big bowl of just meat, just raw meat, and lures hundreds of cats into one singular car. Like, yeah. it's a big clown car of cats. Incredible. Cats clown car. Cats clown car. Clown cats car. Cats, cats clown car. <laughs> cats, cans, CCC, clowns, cats car. Clown. Cats clown cats car. Clowns, cats car. Cats car clowns. Oh, you can't clone cats clown cats car. Wow. <laughs> that was impressive. Oh, you, you couldn't can't clone cats car cats car. <laughs> How many cats cars can Klaus can't cats? <laughs> Klaus says that can'ts can car can't <laughs> cat. This is terrible. Clown cat can'ts. So Luke just takes a big bowl of cannoli. meat. <laughs> cannoli. <laughs> You're stupid. <laughs> Why do we do this? I don't know. It's fun. So so Luke gets them all in the car and somehow successfully just rounds all of the cats in the house up into one car and drives away. And as Luke drives away, Wiley and Cassia sneak into the house. And so easily, Aunt Danny's calling up her lawyer. She's like, hey, I need to write a new will. Like immediately, she's naming Wiley as her sole heir at this point. And then, oh, no. Oh, I just realized this was never brought up again. So I can only assume the worst because... After after Aunt Danny has that phone call, she hears little teeny kitty kitty meows, oh, right. and it's like, oh no! She looks in her closet. There was a litter of kittens left behind. So Aunt Danny bundles them up in the blanket they're in and leaves with them, and then comes back with no blanket, with the, just the blanket. There was no scream, no sounds of pain. We were just confused because we thought, oh, she's gonna have a soft spot for these cats. She's gonna protect them, hide them away from Wiley. I don't, I, I will be honest, I, like, I don't know what happened to the cats. My personal canon, because yeah. cats do come back in this right. movie, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, and, and there are a lot of orange cats. Yes. I'm hoping that they just come back. Uh, but, yeah, we'll just pretend, because I mean, it doesn't like tell us. There were there, and they all got nine lives, so they're probably okay. No it doesn't what. tell us outright what she does with the cats. Nine, 18. Because when she's that, leaving like 30, with them. 40 cats. When she <laughs> leaves with them, she does not like look malicious about her intent. She seems sweet about it, but she just leaves and then comes back with an empty blanket. Fill in the gaps. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So the lawyer, um, the lawyer comes to write up the new will, and um, he says, "Oh, we're gonna have to show up next morning at the earliest to wrap up this change of will because basically it has to be properly like finished, translated to the right terminology, and then signed with two witnesses. Otherwise, yeah. the old will is still gonna be in effect." That's basically all you need to know about that. That's it. So Luke comes home and he finds Cassia hiding downstairs. And the craziest thing about this is Wiley flat out says to him, she's here to murder our aunt. <laughs> like, no problem. <laughs> it's just 
just calm. Fortunately, Luke thinks it's a joke, but he agrees to keep her presence a secret. Does he think it's a joke? I honestly though? don't know. Because the way that the aunt treats him this entire time, he's honestly like kind of hoping maybe she does die. So yeah. like, I don't know if you'd be that upset if it actually was the truth. But you know, like kudos to Luke in this situation. Like she's so mean to him and multiple times he's just like, all right, let's get you ready for bed. Really though, he puts up with so much crap. Yeah, he does. It's crazy. So um, Wiley takes the key to her strong box. He gets it from his brother, Luke. And so uh, he's trying to steal some money from her. She catches him on his way out and she's like, no, please stay by my bedside. You don't have to go, please. And they start having this weird conversation that becomes important because she tells him that Luke has this mistress that he sneaks Ooh. in in the nighttime that when, when he, when like he thinks the, aunt is asleep he like she calls he calls her her moon goddess or something yep. like that and she like eavesdropping and, and kind of spies on them which is creepy i it's would argue creepy. it's kind of creepy um but then as they're having this conversation the aunt puts a hand on wiley's thigh and she's like you've always had a hot hand or something stupid like that why thigh wiley what gosh wifey <laughs> why thigh wifey um but then he he makes some comment about how like you know he's he's like you think I like you think I have a bad memory you think I forget you know I still remember my my dead mother you know and it kind of insinuated in here that like he blames her for the death of his Absolutely, mom yes. and it's kind of a thing so he seems to blame her but anyway cue a silly montage of Wiley and Cassia hitting the town with their stolen money on a fine summer day <laughs> I genuinely completely forgot this scene happened. yeah it was, just, it was just kind of this funny like very seventies style yeah. montage. It was just—it was kind of cute. They were just going on dates and stuff, but then Cassie is like, "Oh, I think I'm falling in love with you, Wiley." Because at first, it's obviously just about the the inheritance he's yeah. gonna get, right? But now she might be falling for him. Ooh. And then this scene is like really actually unnecessary, but it's just funny that it happened. They go to a club, and Wiley's ex, who was in that very first scene <laughs> yeah. that we saw them in, she she's there and attacks Cassia in the bed in the bathroom. Just, it's a pretty rough fight. They're actually like is. really going to town on each they other. They go crazy, <laughs> and it's long. The worst part about this though is freaking uh wiley like gets in the middle of it and he starts, and laughing. starts laughing again <laughs> he's a crazy person i think he just loves the fact that two women are fighting over him i guess it's really stupid i have a theory about why he's so crazy i'll What's, tell you at the end oh, okay cool just just remember put a pin in that remember that theory there it is <laughs> why is oh gosh oh, not in your voodoo doll derek i'm sorry in the <laughs> neck too why would you do yeah, that that's crazy so they so they come back home they're a little drunk after the night they're a little high i think is actually they were smoking yeah, something they were very high and so they start you know getting hot and heavy in like the greenhouse because like the aunt lives in this like nice big ritzy mansion that's honestly the layout of it is kind of hard to follow sometimes but it is attached to this big pretty greenhouse which is really really nice the two of them go in there to kind of like do their business and the aunt uh uh, she finds uh, Garfield, actually, is in the yep. house. She chases it out and tries to go put it in the basement. Mind you, all of the cats are back in the basement all of a sudden. Yep. They just, like, kind of wandered back. Because you know what they say about cats? Can't get rid of them. They always come back. They always come back. The cat's a, cat's a man's best friend. Because of that song, The Cat Came Back. You mm. ever heard that song? No. The cat came back the very next day. Thought he was a goner, but the cat came back. So, so because of that song, <laughs> it actually skewed my idea of what a rhyme could be. <laughs> like as a kid yeah because back and cat don't do rhyme, not know but in my brain they but rhyme. if you say it fast enough cat like back, it, cat back cat back it, cat it, back it, like cat it back, fits cat. it works i want my cat to have a cat back cat, cat back cat. i want my cat back cat back cat back cat back wow that's that's, that's, that's hard it's incredibly difficult i if want you were my home, cat back my cat uh, back my cat back go ahead and uh, do that yeah, cat try back, it. Cat back, cat back, Go ahead and pause the episode and tell us what you thought but like really loud no matter where you are you're in the middle of the grocery store cat back cat back screaming it sorry i got toxoplasmosis <laughs> it makes me hallucinate that my cat's on my back. <laughs> I just got so much cat poop in my eye. I almost swore. Ooh. Womp womp. We are so close. We haven't had to actually censor a thing yet. We will see. There's still some time left. We still have the whole rest of the movie. So at the house... Ant is now eavesdropping on the two of them, and they're just full out describing their conversation about, so how are we going to kill her? Like, after this will is signed, you know, what's the best way to kill her in this situation and, you know, did, did be done with her so we can inherit the reward? And they just, like, have no worries about that. It's actually kind of crazy. <laughs> they're just chilling. Yeah, just totally fine. So the next day, she tells Wiley that she hurt him, but he is resolute. He's like, what are you talking about? I don't know. You're so silly. You're That's so, so crazy. Silly. Ha, Let's ha, go ha, sign ha. your will. Ha, 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 ha. And, and mind you, there's some weird thing that happens with him where every time they're hanging out, they, like, I don't know how else to call it. Yeah. Like, the aunt and Wiley, whenever they're together, he just, like, teases her, and they laugh. Yes. Just nonstop. He actually says some, like, kind of, like, either rude or just messed up things, and she laughs it off anyway. Yeah. He even, like, he makes a comment about that at some point. I can't even remember what it says. And she's like, oh, oh, you you say the the, the, the most chilling things, and it still makes me laugh. Oh, <laughs> 
He's a perfect golden baby boy, and he can do no wrong. Apparently. Their relationship is disgusting. It scares me. I don't judge, but it's wrong. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's wrong. No, I judge a little bit. I listen a little bit. I judge. I I, I judge. So she signs the will. That's all finished up now. Wiley goes to take her on a walk. And she's, of course, uneasy because he had literal talks to murder her. So he's out on a stroll with her in her wheelchair. She swears she sees someone in her bedroom window. He's like, all right, fine. I'll go check it out because it's Cassia. And he goes in there to be like, what are you doing? Get out of here. She sees you from the window, you know. So as she's out there, we find out her her wheelchair is actually motorized, which I'll be honest, I did not know motorized wheelchairs were a thing in 1969. Oh, yeah, <laughs> but so he, she, she starts moving and she starts going. There's like a hit. Hill, there's a tree blocking the way of the window. So she goes down this very, very steep hill. It looks like it's in like San Francisco or something. It is in California. I know that much. But they, uh, she starts going down this hill to look in the window and she tries to drive back up the hill and the mechanism, the electronics in her wheelchair start to malfunction. So she can't get back up the hill without any, without any assistance. And so she started like slowly falling down this hill and having to like hold herself up on the edge of a wall so that she doesn't, you know, die. <laughs> so, um, what happens then is Wiley from inside the house sees her in trouble and runs to rescue her, which is kind of funny to me because I'm like, didn't you want her to die anyway? Like, this yeah. is even better, a complete accident that you had no hand in. But no, really. they dive in on it. They save her life. Yeah. So, but as he runs up to her, a cat is approaching as well. It's Garfield again. And he can't go anywhere near this feline. Absolutely not. So oh. then the cat scares him off and jumps right into her lap, causing her to speed down the hill at an alarming rate. <laughs> it's pretty funny. And then, like, this is another one of those those are like the effect of her like like flying down the hill. Yeah. Some of it was actually kind of impressive because it was definitely like a real person going down a hill in a wheelchair. Either that or it was the kind of thing they do where they have a camera going down a hill and then they like put the projection of that behind her. No, they did that because that was the other one because they had one where it definitely looked like it was just like her wobbling and careening in front of like a screen. But there yeah. were shots literally from far away of someone speeding down a hill in a chair. Yeah. Like, and I, honestly, I don't know how they pulled it off because it looked really impressive. It was impressive. It was honestly impressive that the wheelchair didn't topple over. Yeah. Right. So I mean, it was impressive. She didn't die while filming. Yes, honestly. Or in the movie. But before she can ride into oncoming traffic, Luke rescues her by pulling her out of the chair at the last minute. So she survives. And you can see the wheelchair goes up and it gets run over by a truck. So like she definitely would have been killed at that point. Yeah. Um, so now back in the house, Cassia desperately wants to see the will, but Wiley won't go in because he's terrified that the cats may have returned. And, you know, spoiler alert, they definitely have. They're all over this yeah. house. He doesn't know that they're all in the basement right now. So... He like the thing was kind of traumatic for him. He got scared and, you know, tried to save his aunt from dying. So he was like passed out for a minute. He was scared stiff. The doctor goes on about it for a minute and he gave him muscle relaxers. So now the, the muscle relaxers kick in. He's passed out on the couch upstairs. Cassia steals the key to her to the aunt's strong box and goes to see the will. She goes in. Opens it, no problem. Sees the will has been signed. And then she goes to turn off Aunt Danny's oxygen tank because she's got basically this like, Derek described it as like a Ziploc bag. It was the first Ziploc bag for sure. Yeah, basically just like giant like Ziploc baggy over like the head of her bed to pump oxygen into her. Because she has, what does she have? She can't, it's some breathing problem. I can't remember what it is. Yeah, I don't know. Basically, her lungs are like deteriorating. Yes. So she's got some bad lung problems. So she needs an oxygen tank a lot of the time. So she goes to turn off the oxygen to kill her. But the one remaining cat upstairs, Garfield, swats her away from doing it, actually scratches her and keeps her from doing it. Like yeah. she cannot. And there was even a remark that Wiley said where he's like, those cats won't let you kill her. And she's like, you're being stupid and superstitious. Yeah. Shut up. I'm going to go get it. So yeah, as she leaves the room, she finds a trail of something red. We can assume it's blood, probably. I was assuming it was meat from the like meat bowl they mm -hmm. used to conjure the cats. Yeah, because from it's a trail from the basement leading all the way upstairs to uh, to Wiley in his room, right? And so the door is open now to the basement, and all of these cats just come flooding out of it, like hundreds of cats. So many. Oh, yeah. In reality, probably like. 15 20, to 20 cats yeah. that they just like repeated shots of. Yeah. But it was it was kind of fun. It was similar to like when we watched Night of the Lepus and there were like all the shots of like the bunnies in slow motion. Yeah. It was kind of fun. The music went well with it too. Yeah, it was like, pretty good. I liked it a little bit. So the red trail leads all the way up to Wiley lying down upstairs. All the cats come pouring into the room now. And that same black cat from his childhood that nearly smothered him nearly smothers him again. But his brother saves him. He like picks up the cat by the scruff and he's fine. This is where things take an interesting turn. But Derek and I called this 
pretty early oh, on. So early in the movie. So remember when the ant was talking about how Luke has some secret mistress, his moon goddess? Yeah. We definitely called that that was going to be Cassia this oh, whole yeah. time. And it was. Yep. So yeah, Cassia walks in and then her and Luke just start making out. Yep. I was like, okay, cool. Don't try to hide it even slightly anymore. <laughs> so they start talking about their plans. They've had the entire time. It's been the two of them pulling the strings this entire time because she's in love with this Luke guy and she's like, oh, it's not fair that your aunt comes in. She's obsessed with Wiley. So they're like, let's use him. Let's get him in on this. Let's get him to be the sole inheritor of this. Then we'll kill him. Then you can get it. Bing, bang, Yay, boom. Bing, bang, boom. We're rich and we're in love. Let's get out of here. But now <laughs> <laughs> Cassia gets a little freaked out about the cat superstitions because she's like, oh, he was right. The, the cats came back. And yeah, so they it, wouldn't let me kill. Him. Yeah. Meanwhile, Wiley is in a state of like catalepsy. Yeah, dude. Derek, do you want to tell me a little yeah. bit about that? Um, I will actually. Not yes, Derek. please. Science Jim, uh, tell me. Catalepsy more. is a neurological finding of prolonged muscular rigidity or and immobility. Immobility. This is from osmosis.org, by the way, where the individual's limbs remain in an unnatural fixed posture. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's, it's like a catatonic it's state. It's a catatonic state, right? It's a cat. I, <laughs> it's a cat atonic oh, that's what state. I was just about to say. It's me. It's Puny yeah, the Punter. Okay. It's cat atonic. I of the cat atonic. Hey, I'm going to go now. A bing. You gave me catalepsy. Is he good? Is he okay? No, I don't think he, he, he won't move. Oh, well. I did take my hand out of him, though. So that Okay, well, yeah, that makes sense. That changes things. So. Luke wants Wiley to die in the basement at the hands or paws of the cats. And so he starts bringing him down towards the basement. Cassia was tasked to bring the bowl of meat down to the basement so the cats would follow. But as she's trying to get the bowl of meat, she spills some on herself, causing the cats to attack and chase her. <gasps> and I say attack, mostly just chase her. There actually aren't a lot of scenes of like cats attacking a person. Yeah. This There is a really cool shot, though, of her like standing in the moonlight in this like white gown mm -hmm. covered in like the beef blood. And when we saw that in the trailer, I was like, oh, that's a cool shot. That's right. crazy she's covered in her own blood. No, it's actually just myoglobin from the beef. Oh, yeah. Tell me about myoglobin. Do you want to know? What's that about? You know when you open like a package of like a steak or like beef or something? It's yeah, like, yeah. It's red. So yeah. It's actually not blood oh. per se. It's oh. myoglobin. Myoglobin. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead What's the difference between that and blood? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Yeah. I'm a little worried now that don't you said that, <laughs> Mr. Culinary School. <laughs> So she gets chased away by the cats. Um, Luke goes to turn off Aunt Danny's oxygen tank as Cassia is being attacked, right? So Cassia, as she was running away from all of these cats, she runs up a ladder to protect herself, and the cats scare her, and she falls from the top of the ladder, knocking her down, causing her to fall to her death. There was something about this shot that actually kind of irked me yeah like freaked me out a little bit yeah. it was there was something it about, affected you like it was like a camera at the top of the ladder they just like tipped over and it kind of just like <laughs> it really did give you that feeling it's like being on a roller coaster you know you really Which feel that like oh gosh you feel your stomach kind of turn as you fall and plummet and hit the ground yeah, it was effective i hope that camera was okay i don't I know don't if cameras so. were hurt in the process of making this film. i don't think it was <laughs> so um as luke goes over he mourns her death and it is revealed that aunt danny was actually hiding here in the greenhouse that's where the ladder was hiding here in the greenhouse the whole time so she was wasn't in her bed with that oxygen tank so whatever he just turned off which we totally expected because yeah. like her bed was it like she was complete was completely covered up it yeah. looked like one of those things where like you know a kid snuck out and they put pillows under the blanket to make yeah. it look like a body There's a little tape recorder with her like i'll be out for the next couple days <laughs> just yeah. come back i'm still horny for wiley don't you worry <laughs> <laughs> so as luke mourns her death uh it is revealed so yeah and danny's there um wiley appears out of nowhere yep and tells her tells them that he's leaving he's just like and, and and this is the crazy all of this is pretty crazy but aunt danny is like wiley no don't come here please all of the cats are here he's like i know they're everywhere like he's super cool about it now because Derek was saying at the very beginning of this he's like he should be like a uh, he should do what batman did and be like oh i fear the bat so now i'm gonna become the bat so now he is the cat man hey can i remember when i put a pin in a theory yes so i have a theory i think the reason so obviously i mean this is the end of the movie we yes, can just we here. can say that he He's apparently on the same side as the cats. I think apparently. so. Uh, toxoplasmosis is, I think, the reason. That's what it is. Yeah. So, he got toxoplasmosis. Yeah, and the cats, there's like old wives' tales that if like you get... Old wives' tales? You get sick, like, that's why they say like crazy cat lady and stuff like that. Because, oh. like, because like the, the fecal matter from the cats will get into your blood system and kind of make you go insane like it starts to eat away at your brain yeah right so like it, it literally is a neurological condition that will like 
mess you up. Mm-hmm. But it kind of makes you go crazy and start to devote yourself to these cats. Well, there are there are wives' tales about like how the cats can control you mm. and use you to do their bidding. So maybe. Maybe that's Wiley's situation here. Maybe, maybe he when he was mind a kid, controlled by the cats. Maybe when he was a kid, the cat scratched him, Happened put a little piece time. of poop right in his, his right wound. in his little, little fecal matter, little right fecal in that matter. wound. Beep. And then he was just Ew. like, Oop, I'm under so control much worse the than cats salt now. in the wound. It's... And that's why it's called Eye of the Cat because it was in his eye. <laughs> also, the cat was like a one eyed cat. I'm just really, I've been sitting here this whole time, really thinking about like. What kind of villains would Catman have? And the close, the first thing <laughs> I could boy. think of, the first one I could think of was instead of Mr. Freeze, it's Mr. Cheese. That's pretty good. And it's a cat. It's pretty <laughs> it's, good. No, it's a mouse. It's a mouse. It's a mouse. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, His well, biggest villain. Dog Man is like the cat woman, right? So like they, okay. they don't like each other, but they, they love each other. That's true. Yeah. It's like kind of this weird, like, you know, like, do you want them to be together? Are they even, are they right for each other? You yeah. know, he, he fights crime and she make the crime. It's still Robin, though. He fights the crime and he's, make it a crime because yeah the robin, robin stays the same robin is still the sidekick except he hates him the whole time because like cats hate birds disdain. yeah absolutely he tries to eat him actually the, there's a ball of twine that actually killed Catman's family <laughs> <laughs> just a giant sentient ball of twine and that's what happened to mr cheese's wife she got stuck in a mouse trap very good, very good. <laughs> set by Catman. set by Catman. yeah like like as like <laughs> Mr. Cheese was living yeah. in an orphanage, right? Oh, uh, yeah. And the, he was put in the orphanage because Catman yeah. set a mousetrap for Dr. Mousetopus, who was <laughs> Dr. Cheese's dad <laughs> and killed Dr. Cheese. Yeah, you get it. It all goes It back. all connects. We're going to start our own comic. Catman is taken now, guys. The world's world's greatest meow, meow detective. I can't. I got nothing. So anyway, this movie just ends now. Yeah, so basically Luke, no, sorry, um, Wiley comes in and is completely fine with the fact there's a bunch of cats and he just says, well, I'm going to go now. Sorry about all of this. Exit Wiley. And we just get one last pan up to the to Garfield, the orange cat up high on some rafter somewhere. And then we just get a, an end sequence of like shots of the city with those silhouettes of cats covering the screen again. The end. It just ends. Yeah, man. What is going? What? It was too long and yet not long enough. It was just kind of a letdown to be all of that build up for that reveal. That was honestly, we guessed it in the reveal of the like, yeah. the fact that Luke and Cassio were together was not that big, honestly. Yeah, no. It was kind of a disappointment. I'm glad we figured it out beforehand, but like, I don't know, the reveal was kind of lame. But that is Eye of the Cat from 1969. Yeah, let's talk we about our expectations. We did it. Talk about our expectations. Um, I said, uh, let's see, I have to flip it again. Yeah. Ridiculous editing that will make us laugh. In the beginning, had some fun edits. We were talking about that right that the, the green screen moments were funny but it actually had some good work in there not as laughable as i thought no. i just do kind of wish those fun stylings were more throughout the movie and not just at the beginning i thought Absolutely. they were fun what you got uh the uh ridiculous plot for me the plot was just all over the place oh, yeah. but it did keep me intrigued yeah which surprised me and so it was just kind of but it was all over the place. Totally. <laughs> and I and I still, like, as you can tell, we're making up our own plots for it because that's yes. more interesting. Really, though. Which you could argue makes a better movie because we're still wanting to talk about There's it. There's a fine line you have to walk about giving them enough and not giving them too much, you know, yeah. leaving something to the imagination. I said, so gosh dang melodramatic. And that was all this movie was. It wasn't really horror at all. No. It was just a melodrama. Though there were a couple shots. There were a couple really good shots a of the couple. cats at the beginning. Yes, you're right. You're right. You're right. And then that shot of the, the ladder did irk me a mm. little bit, but it wasn't anything scary. Yeah, not really that horrific. No, What's yours? Uh, stuffed cats. No. So no. I, I, I felt like they could have had more, honestly. Really, though? Like, I feel like they should have used more. And if they did use any, we couldn't tell. No. But I don't think they did. I think, mm-hmm. I I swear, I'll, I'll, I'll pray. I'll pray that the one that got thrown at the beginning was a stuffed animal. I mean, yeah. And it was the same orange cat Garfield that we saw throughout the rest of the movie. So we'll assume he was okay. And yeah. like, you know, it seemed safe enough. That's true. Um, I said off screen kills for sure. Yes, but no. I thought there were going to be more more deaths in the movie. There was only one. There was one, really. Namely, at the hands of cats, and that never really happened. And so really, that that one death that we had of that, it was just like, she fell off the ladder, then we saw her body laying there with some blood on her forehead. So I'm like, that's the closest, like, off-screen kill that we got. For sure. Some wild attempt at being psycho. Uh, Yeah, they definitely tried to play with the mommy issues, or the aunt issues. Yeah. They had some 
trauma to show the main character's issues. Then, especially in the end, though, with that wild misdirection of him being with the cats the whole time. Yeah, that was weird. I still don't really understand what happened there. Yeah, I don't either. Uh, I said probably some wrestling with a cat puppet and none at all. I was totally wrong about this one. Yeah. But again, I thought this movie was going a di- very different way with so the cats. We. I thought we were dealing with like a killer cats movie. Yeah. Didn't happen. So. Uh, and then Hitchcock, Hitchcock-esque shots. Oh, for sure. Actually, we didn't really mention this, but the mm-hmm. cinematography was pretty good. Oh, they totally. They had some really interesting shots, like using mirrors to reflect the scene that was going on. I loved it. Like cool hallways and really good use of lighting. Yeah, very good. Uh, and then final expectation was cat actors. Cheers. Cat, cat actors. actors. You watch cat the whole movie actors. with some cats cat in it. Cat actors. And you think cat to yourself, actors. they are really cat cute. actors. You wonder cat why you're scared actors. about a bunch of cat cats. Actors. Well, it's probably cat toxoplasmosis. Cat, cat actors. I, I fit cat it in. Acts. I I have said the word toxoplasmosis probably 80 times today. Because you guys don't understand how many times I said it during the movie. New drinking game. Take a shot every time Derek says toxoplasmosis. <laughs> <laughs> I talk so... Talk, talk, I talk so. I talk so plasmosis. I talk so plasmosis. Very good. It's like I think, therefore right, I am. Let's say our expectation but, result for this one. Is the same okay, time. ready? No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> no, I'll say it. These cats were some high quality actors, yeah. but not very scary. No, yeah, that's it. Uh, I was just kind of worried for them the whole time. Totally. Like they were, they were decent, but yeah, I was just, I was just worried for them. Yeah. Uh, surprises. I'll start here. Um, did it feel very long? Yes, but I still found myself having a decent time and I was intrigued by the plot that was unfolding. Like it was like melodramas kind of like stretch things out and make things feel very long. It was only an hour and 40 minutes, but it felt like a long movie, though. There weren't any points where I was like, man, is this movie almost over yet? It just I noticed how long it felt. Me too. Um, I just I was surprised by the lack of actual cats in Eye of the Cat. Yeah, they were a decent part of the plot, but not really utilized in the way that I was expecting, you know, not in the way that I thought Uh, the cinematography was great just like Derek mentioned earlier I thought it was fun and invented and like I mentioned reminded me of like Italian giallo films with its stylings from time to time though again really wish they were more consistent with that and had more fun and then I'm sorry that ending was dumb and boring there was no real resolution no. or anything resolved it just kind of stopped an hour it was after an hour and 40 minutes of build up for what yeah, that man. that's it for me, I'll just start right off with the ending. Man, like, that, what was that? It was hot what garbage. What was that? Didn't make any sense. So sad. Uh, the amount of cats surprised me so much. Mm-hmm. Like, they wanted us to think that there were even more cats in this movie, but there were, I don't know, It both ways, right? This, this surprise goes both ways. One, there were so many cats physically that they had, like, yes, being filmed. Absolutely. But then on the reverse side of that, in the movie itself, called Eye of the Cat, there were not that many cats. No. So both, both surprised me. Mm-hmm. Um, and my final expectation, other than, like, how great the cinematography was, is that this movie could have been done with no cats at all. Totally. I think that actually not having cats would have made this a better movie. I think if you still called it Eye of the Cat and maybe had one cat at the beginning, because I really felt like they were trying to do a thing where they were like, had the woman who was like being compared to a sneaky cat. And I feel like if they maybe used that a little bit more, it could have been more interesting. Absolutely. But if they had cut the cat plot altogether... It would have been a better movie. Honestly, yeah, because really it was only used as a fear tactic to scare Wiley. And that only became a real plot device only a couple times. It and really wasn't even a huge away. thing. Yeah, honestly. Then at the very end, he's like, no, I'm not scared of cats anymore. And it's like, was he scared at all? I don't think he time? ever was. Like, I have no idea what happened. I think he was being controlled by the cats or like, like I made a joke about that. That's but I actually fun. do think that that was what they were going Could for. Could have. Because it explains. Plasmosis. It explains. Well, <laughs> Probably not that, but like I, the, the beginning of the movie when he's like freaking out the out about uh, bleh, freaking out about the cat in his apartment. Yeah, like that would have made sense if he was like controlling the cats yeah. or the cats were controlling him. Why he was able to know it was there? That makes sense. That's better. I don't know. It's a better movie if you think it's a movie about mind controlling cats. We'll go with that direction. Yeah. <laughs> are we are we at verdicts yeah, now? Okay. Verdict. For me, I got a new one here. That was melodramable. Oh, pretty good. This was really not much of a horror movie, and it barely was a suspenseful movie. Everything was romanticized and drawn out and. Far too horny. Yeah, but I felt like it told an interesting enough story that kept my attention throughout, just with a really lackluster ending, really. Yeah. But it made me miss Garfield a bit, just because yeah. like, the Garfield movie specifically, because that one actually had a lot of cats in it. So sorry, Garfield, your lasagna is in another rich lady's mansion. Yeah, that was pretty good. 
<laughs> What's yours? Uh, for me, that was almost a bull. Ooh, so I close. Have, I Have the Cat wasn't a bad movie, but it wasn't really a great one either. The scares had potential, honestly, and a couple shots were unsettling, but in the end, it was just another idea put to screen that didn't really go anywhere. The twists didn't even come as a surprise, and even the big final twist was so far out of left field and left unresolved that it didn't work. It's strange to me that a movie about cats would have been better without cats. Yeah. But ultimately, it wasn't a complete catastrophe. It's just another 60s movies that didn't land on four feet. Hey, pretty so good. Puns. So I'd love to give you trivia, but Count, Count Trivia ran away because we were doing a Sesame Street. Oh, it's, someone's handing me something. It's um, it's a gold, gold-plated gold letter here. On the front, it's just, it's, you see this, has three words on it. It just says, Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, oh. Oh, is it? Is it from? It's me, the count. Whoa, the Sesame Street's the count is here? One, two, three pieces of trivia. There are three pieces of trivia. Uh, Thank- uh, uh. Wow, gosh. Oh, this is such a. Do you have time to sit and chat? This is such a fresh energy. I'm really loving this. You want to talk with me? Hey, what is this guy doing in here, huh? What is this fricker doing in here in my, Don't my lose space? It. I'm Don't gonna, lose I'm going to bat out. I'm going to bat out. I'm going to censor the show. I'm going to do it. He's gone. I, oh, I scared them off. He's getting his limo. Then he's I, driving away. Of course he has a limo. Gosh, look at me on the count. They have a stupid little show. <laughs> Take her trivia. Give me that. <laughs> Rips it up. <laughs> you say the stage direction. Count uh, The <laughs> count trivia now rips up a piece of paper. <laughs> Walks off stage. <laughs> Exit pursued by a bear. <laughs> so nice. trivia for this one, not a lot, honestly. I, there wasn't a lot of information about this movie, which should be, you know, obvious due to the fact couldn't find the budget, couldn't find, you know, yeah, anything. Um, anything about it. There was no critic score for this one. It's it's a lesser known movie for sure. Yeah. Um, the film had a reshot alternative ending, which according to this says was less horrific and graphic when the film was shown on television in the early 1970s. This alternative ending can be seen in multiple home release versions available on the internet. So we'll let you in on a little secret here. We looked up with the alternate ending. I don't know which one was supposed to be the alternate versus the other. They were so close to each other. I think maybe she had less blood on the ground. I guess so, but like neither neither of them felt very horrific or graphic at all. So I don't understand where that came from. And neither of them added anything either. It was essentially the exact same ending. Yes, exactly. We literally had to like stop and make sure we're like, no, because that's different. Yeah, this. But there were enough differences that we were watching different. Just slightly. It was crazy. Um, Shots from Eye of the Cat's opening sequence as well as a few shots from a funeral sequence flashback that occurs later in the film are seen briefly in a 1973 night gallery titled Die Now, Pay Later. What it's is season night three, gallery? season six or season three, episode 16. I'm glad you asked. I didn't look a lot into this, but apparently you remember the Twilight Zone. Deep into the Twilight Zone. Yes, exactly. So Rod Serling's The Twilight Zone. Hello. Apparently he had another horror, like, you know, short. Welcome to. The Night Gallery. Really, though? So it's like basically this an American anthology television series aired on NBC from uh, 1970 to 1973. Cool. So it was a pretty short-lived thing. But another thing Rod Serling was behind that was like short horror stories. Honestly, I kind of want to check it out. Seems, I, too. seems pretty neat. I know that's literally, you know, as much as I do now. Sweet. Um, Tippy Hedren, oh. who was in The Birds, yeah. right, of The Birds fame, uh, turned, oh, down, the birds. turned down the part that was later played by Gail Honeycutt, which is uh, the Cassia. So oh, it was, oh, yeah. they did originally want to get some of that Hitchcock fame up in the movie, yeah. you know, but she was like, no, thank you. All the performances in this movie were actually pretty good. They did just I fine. I should mention the, the lady who played Danny. She yeah, was Danny. the Baroness in uh, Sound of Music. Which feels like such a deep cut. Like, <laughs> but like, I mean, but you remember it. You're yeah. sitting there, you're like, gosh, she looks so familiar. Yeah, what is it? What is it? She played the so, Baroness. So not that's Julie all we got. Andrews. No, not her. Please. The other, the other. Not her. The other so so uh, that's all we got for Eye of the Cat from 1960. Derek, we've got a fun one coming up for next week. Now, it technically is not low. In, not it, at all. It's it's 46%, I want to yeah, say. It's yeah. at a 46%, but we have to watch it we because we watched the first one. Even if the next one is certified, like... Uh, certified fresh. That, that I was trying to say certified horrible. <laughs> if Even if the next one is 100% of Rotten Tomatoes, we are watching it for a main episode. We will be watching. Because 60 episodes ago. 60 Whoa, episodes ago. For real? Yeah, so we watched Lord. Blood and Honey 1, Winnie the Pooh, mm-hmm. on our 10th episode special. 
And now on our 70th, 70th episode, episode, 60 episodes later, we're going to be watching. We're going back to the Hundred Acre Woods. Winnie Blood the Pooh, honey. Blood and Honey Two. Can't even get that right. We can't get it. Come on. <laughs> so yes, we are going back to the Hundred Acre Woods. Let's give you just a little bit of an amuse bouge. Tell you a little bit. I'm about actually this pretty one. excited to watch this. Not wanting to live in the shadows any longer, Winnie the Pooh, Piglet, Owl, and Tigger take their fight to the town of Ashdown, leaving a bloody trail of death and mayhem in their wake. <laughs> Do you think my favorite thing about Blood and Honey one was the the microphone pack that they left on someone? That's still so funny. That, like out, they like lifted up someone's shirt to fix their mic pack and then left the shot in with their a mic pack long showing. shot to where you completely see this person's I mic pack. I don't know why that stuck with me, but that is like my favorite it's thing. Just in the first so Blood funny. And Honey. So anyway, go listen to episode ten before you listen to next week's. Yeah, episode. do a little just bit of a watch little, there. Maybe I'll go listen to it too. Just I'm gonna to go listen to it. I think that'd be kind of fun. Just some comparisons reminder. between the two. It's easier than watching the movie again. <laughs> A lot easier than watching that movie again, for sure. Left. But yeah, so that's that's our plans for next next time. Please join us uh, in two weeks. Now we'll be watching Blood and Honey 2, and we'll tell you all of our thoughts and bits about that one. In the meantime, we cannot let you go without giving you a bit of a Garfield horror scope this week. And guys, this Garfield horror scope is just wholesome and nice. It is just a sweet story. Basically, to put it into words for you, John wakes up Garfield in the beginning of the day. They take him out for ice cream. They swim in a pool. They have burgers for food. They watch the sunset. And Garfield gives John this very sweet, heartfelt hug. And he just in his head says, thank you for the perfect day, John. No one is the butt of the joke in this one. There are no rude pranks going on. It's just a sweet, wholesome, like... What is going on? Will you, everyone, go look at this one? It's it's Garfield, July 28th, 2024. My favorite thing about this Are you, one... Yeah, I know what you're going to say. Is the first panel <laughs> is Garfield in, like, a rapper costume saying, Yo, Garfield! And dropping, and a, dropping microphone. a microphone. He's got a backwards hat. He's got gold chains and, like, a basketball shorts on, like... I, why, why? Why is this happening? <laughs> the crap? It's it's almost like because at the beginning it, this happens on all of them. There's like one panel that serves as like almost like the cover art for the yeah. thing, and it is completely unrelated to the sweet wholesome story going on here. <laughs> Derek, do you have anybody you want to be? I kind of want to be the general vibe. Yeah, I was thinking about the same general. I was thinking about that too. Yeah. So please tell us about the general vibe. You know, in life, you have the people that you travel life with. You know, like your friends, your family, your coworkers, you know, and they may drive you crazy. They may steal your lasagna. They may steal your coffee. They may prank you all the time. But sometimes you just got to stop. You got to take stock of the sunrise. You got to take stock of the beautiful air. And you just got to appreciate being alive and the people that are traveling this journey with you. Yeah. That's good. That's beautiful. <laughs> and I'm, I'm honestly, I'm just going to period that and I'm going to be the microphone. Mic drop. That's Yo it, Garfield. Man. Yo, Garfield. Yo, Garfield. Yo, Garfield. <laughs> Yo, Garfield. Did you hear these guys on That Was Horrible? They're on a bunch of social medias. You oh, want to check yeah. them out? Hey, are they on the TikTok? Yeah, they're on all of those places. They're on Instagram at that underscore was underscore oh, horrible. I'm going set up right now. Twitter at TWH Podcast. Oh, sick, oh what's reels. that? They're on Facebook at That Was Horrible oh, Podcast. They post every YouTube week. at That Was Horrible. Whoa, and you were they right. have shorts. They're right here. They're on TikTok oh, at That gosh, Was Horrible. Oh, my banned yet. They've got it right here. Look at that. Now, they family friendly no i guess just for this episode no nope, but this, we did it we did it boys we did it pull up that list one more time uh okay <laughs> yep hold on yep okay uh, oh, we'll, oh, we'll ads, these. ads 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 oh no oh that's the invention of the wheelchair <laughs> we'll never know we'll never remember oh uh, here he goes ah oh, darn merlin's beard <laughs> merlin socks shut the front door holy horse pucky <laughs> <laughs> Son of a monkey. Oh, goodness. William well, thank, Shatner. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Jeez. And that was horrible. As Horse always, pucky. Garfield be with you. And be with you. Stay, Stay spooky. spooky. Okay, ready? We're going to swear on three, two, two. goodbye. Goodbye.